Hi, Tom. Hi, Mark. How are you? <laughs> <laughs> I'm so, all um, right. <laughs> so, um, you know, obviously, like, you're the guy that I like to, to go to to be like, uh, what's going on in things that people should give a damn about? And um, I wanted to have you back on. We haven't done a podcast in a while because, you know, work and life happens and, you know, Indeed. we don't necessarily get paid for this, just like school directors. Um, so uh, let me ask you, um, <laughs> my first question is, what's wrong with you? <laughs> you know, it's funny because that is the first question I get from almost anyone when we're talking about anything related to school board. I give a shit. I mean, is that is that is that what it is? Because it seems like it seems like everybody I talk to, um, the street, the people on the man, the man and the lady on the street, um, are always like, uh, you know, Tom's got some really good ideas, and a lot of them are like teachers, ex teachers, um, people in the district, and regular citizens. So I just don't understand why it seems like you've had almost a decade of just pushback on you. <laughs> That's funny. And um, you're still jumping into the fire. Yeah, like, you know, oh, this, this is... Pushback doesn't bother me. Is it psychotic or is it that that you just actually give a damn? Uh, well, it's that, and I, I don't know if it's a personality flaw or what, but um, w- pushback motivates me. Right. Um, I don't know. Feeds your fire. It, it does. Um, so, for me... Well, you're always like that when they're like, you can't do that? You're like, yeah, I can. Yeah, yeah. It's a Borthwick thing. I have two brothers who are exactly the same way, so... So, um, I mean, are you oppositionally defiant in a good way? Yes. Yeah. Yes. So for me, you know, you're right. Yeah. Better part of a decade I've been involved in this. And for the better part of a decade, I've been publicly writing about and suggesting ideas and critiquing the district and nobody listens. And I I remember a couple of years ago, I wrote a post called steal my ideas. And, and the thing is, I don't do this for glory. I don't care in terms of myself. It's a, it's a time suck. Uh, it takes me away from my family, yeah. especially my two kids. Yep. Who, Congratulations, by the way. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I, I mean, I not lo- on the first one, just the second one. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he's definitely more jovial. <laughs> um, so, so for me, I, like I said, when I when I wrote "Steal My Ideas," the point was pay attention. These are good ideas. They're workable. Here's why they're workable. I don't need credit. Just do it because it'll be better. And I, you know, if I'm going to speculate about why I get pushback. It's because I don't think people uh, can react to that in a way that makes sense to them. Like, I don't fit into a paradigm. Um, I don't, I'm independent. But what's, but what's the paradigm that you would fit into? Like, political party or <laughs> ideal, ideology, philosophy? So, I mean, f- ideologically, I'm like, you know, I, I'm a huge Bernie guy. Um, I, you know, I identify as a democratic socialist, but as a populist as well. You know, it was funny. Uh, um, I, I believe among Fox viewers, Bernie is the number one most popular democratic candidate Mm -hmm. makes sense because he speaks about issues that matter to people right and and you know i try to frame things in those ways you know what should our priorities be for school board well number one we've got to think about how to make sure the kids get the best education number two we've got to think about our employees having the resources that they need from a salary and benefit standpoint but also in the classroom and also our taxpayers because we don't want to overburden them right that's a really simple philosophy and the thing is, you, you I'm going to get to all this shit, too. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, well, just, so, so just to wrap up, then, I think the reason I don't fit into a, a definable paradigm is because for me, you know, I always do my own thing and it involves working with anyone. Right. Who, and, and but, you know, people will. Well, you're not like a party, uh, even when it comes politically. You're just like I, the best guy for you. You, you identify as a certain thing, but you're yeah. still the best guy for the job. It doesn't matter. Oh. The best person for the job. Always, always. And um, I got I briefly got involved in the local Democratic Party, like in, in their leadership. Right. And it wasn't going the way I wanted. So I quit. Right. You know, so I, I will always do my own thing. And all that really ends up doing is pissing everybody off. Right. And I think that's why I deal with what I deal with, regardless of my ideas, because we're such the political culture here is is such that it's always about how does this work for me? And well, it's it's strangely like um, po- poisonously. uh I don't even understand it because even when people like you can talk to people in, in Southern Arizona and they're like, Oh, Scranton politics. Oh, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like they just, yeah. it's, it's nationwide known, Yep. you know, and for the, for, 
And it's never known for the good shit. We're always we're always the the butt of the joke in national whatever. Well, I mean, we have the office, so there is some good shit. Yeah, we were the butt of the joke. We were the butt of uh, in Home Alone. We were the butt of the joke. I mean, yeah. I mean, we've always been the butt of the joke, and there's never any good stories. And then you know, in the last couple of years, it's like the stories are just getting freaking worse. Yeah. And so, like, what like what makes you not go like uh, you know what? Because I, I I just want people because it because it, it's so frustrating to me. Um, you know, just like a good idea looking at you and like, and everyone else doesn't get it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Where it's like, you know, cake or death, I'll, cake is fine. Yeah. Um, it, to me, it's that obvious of a person that you want to have there, you know, calling balls and strikes and you just keep running. You're like Rudy, man. Like I just, <laughs> I just, I just don't. And thank you for still doing it. Well, I appreciate that. I, I'll always, and I'm sure there's a lot of people who share the same sentiment as I. Yeah, yeah, I, and I appreciate that from everybody who's been supportive of yeah. me. Um, it, like I said, it's just for me. It, I'm probably a, a different animal, and I've thought about it a lot. And this is actually the first time I've probably been able to talk about it publicly. So I appreciate you bringing it up. But yeah, I, I don't. I just I don't fit into any particular group, and so every group makes assumptions. And um, the only correct assumption is that I'm going to do what's smart and right. And I can totally understand why people would be skeptical of that in the city of Scranton, because look at the news every day. There's some sort of corruption disaster every day. You know, people are suffering because of poor political decisions. I completely understand the, the cynicism. I'm one of the cynics. Yeah. It's just that I took my cynicism and said, I'm going to do something with it. Well, I mean, I was with you on election night. And the amazing thing is the next morning it was like you were still going. Yeah. You know, and I couldn't. I, first of all, I couldn't believe that you didn't win uh, in the primary. And then and the second thing I was like, I mean, I'm like, I'm like, if I was Tom, I would have been like, that was it. That was the last moment for me. You know what's funny? My family, my wife, my friends took it. You way. can lock that edge if you want. All right. Yeah. Righty tighty. I learned that in shop class. I hope we don't get rid of that. <laughs> Might go. I'll get there. I'll get uh, there. But 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 yeah, my my wife took it and my family took it way harder than I did. Um, it's funny. My my father uh, is that because you're used to being a loser. <laughs> I'm just I like that. I like that. <laughs> you know, loss is a matter of perspective. Um, I, man, I got my voice out there, and I always get my voice out there, and people listen. Yeah, you know, the amazing thing is, is it allows you to get back up. I don't have. Yeah. Yeah. You're like, ah, oh, whatever. Really, I'm gonna keep going. Nothing's gonna stop. It me. doesn't bother yeah. me. I, I I learn and I move on. Like right. a lot of people take these things in a deeply, deeply personal way. And am I aggravated about the actions of some people that negatively impacted me? Sure. Yeah. Will they? Will they? Or do they know that I feel that way? Of course. Right. I, you know, I I don't ever keep my mouth shut about anything. Um. So I think that uh, I think that's why I've always liked you. There's never been bullshit. There's <laughs> never been like. There's never. You've never tried to shine anything that wasn't shineable. Yeah, yeah, it, it's funny because because well, I respect that because you're gonna stab me in the heart before you stab me in the back. Yeah, yeah, you'll yeah, see it. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I've I've seen it. I've I've been like, <laughs> yeah, Victoria will come on and be like, Tom said this, and I'm like, oh Jesus, he's right. <laughs> um, all right, let so enough about you. Um, real quick, can we do like a previously on to get us up to speed for the people who don't want to go through the last two podcasts that we had? Sure. Uh. We the previously on is that uh, I said everything's awful and it was and it is and we are paying the price for it. But before then, you didn't have perspective. So your perspective at that time was what? So because you have you have now become a, a, a school yes. board member since we've done this. It's funny. Okay, so on. So um, give me the January pre day. Sure, January first, yeah. twenty seventeen. Wrote a post on my blog called yeah. "The Scranton School District Is Doomed." Yeah, it, the writing was on the wall that financially that what was happening was completely unsustainable. They were borrowing their way out of debt, which literally makes no sense. Right. So. It's like a Ponzi scheme or yeah, something. It's crazy. Yeah. And 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 so when I saw that and, and looked at the numbers and I paid attention for a very long time, I said, it, this isn't going to last. And we went into recovery because of it. I My very first meeting was Dr. Fine and the chief recovery officer's first meeting. So we were both together on the ground floor with this. And this is in 2017. No, no, no. 2017 was the post. Yeah. 2019 was when I was appointed. I apologize. I should have been specific. No, no, but I want, I want you to yeah. get me up to before yeah. you were appointed. Yeah. So Where was the Scranton School District at before you became a school director? It, it was falling apart, but but I feel like... For those the, who don't know. Yeah, it was falling apart for those who don't know. And I feel like the boards were kicking the can down the road uh, in the sense that rather than do what needed to be done, it was just, oh, we could just borrow some money. Oh, we could just use a one-time fund transfer. No, one-time... For the, so, so for those who don't understand, and I'm not trying because you're no, no, way no. F- 
effing smarter than me. And if I drop an F bomb to the people listening, I'm sorry. Um, no, it's incensing. Um, <laughs> siblings. Um, uh, totally forgot my question. What did I say? <laughs> you were talking about, you know, debt and. So oh, yeah. So for people who don't know. So what, basically what the Scranton School District is, is they 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 mismanaged in a sense or maybe literally what decades yeah, that, so that's a huge, huge part I just, of it. Just like real quick, how did we get to like... There's two main facets. Of yeah. It. Well, maybe three. So I would call the three-part problem here, and I'm going to start with um, the, the ones that are financially not as impactful, even though they are important. So we have we have um, corruption and mismanagement. That right. is... You um, think that's number one, probably? No, that's number three. Oh, uh, shit. Financially. Okay. okay. Number two, financially, is a lack of willingness to admit there even was a problem, which then led to borrowing to solve the problem. And then you have things like, no one likes tax increases, but during election years, they're like, oh, we'll just borrow money and not have a tax increase, which doesn't do anything, uh, except make the future tax increases inevitable and worse. Uh, along with program cuts and furloughs. But the number one issue, and it's one that um, you know you, you might have seen me in the news for, is the fair funding issue. Scranton... On, well, I want to get to this. Yeah, we will. But that's, yeah. that is why we're broke, because they owe us almost $20 million a year, um, which is astronomical. Okay, so let's, let's get before the fair funding sure. thing, because, because the conversation has been in a lot of directions. That seems like a fairly new... It, it is. I'm not saying. I'm not saying it is. I'm not saying it is because it might be one of those things where, like, oh, I just noticed the moon outside. That you know what I mean. So, um, so, so basically, it's it's number one. The tax the tax base in the last 30, 40 years has has decreased because people have moved out of town. Um, you know, there's not as much revenue as before. That's part of it, but that's given for, given it seems, and I'm and I'm speaking from things not that I've heard on the street, sure. but stuff that I've seen in the news. It seems that there was handshakes and other stuff there's a lot so we'll talk part a 36 percent of the city is non-taxable that is horrendous think of but why non-profits so and government building so think think of the rest of a every third, other, over a third of yes, our city is yes, is, is is off the we can't touch it so if you look at that's not that's real that's real that's the Does number everyone else knows this? i don't know but if you go what, what is what is it in taylor two, i don't know two percent so you look at that it and the the number so we tax our local tax burden is forty one percent. What that means is, uh, we our budget for the Scranton School District, which is one hundred sixty six million a year, forty one percent of it comes from local residents. In in York and Reading, it's around twenty percent. Their tax burden isn't anywhere near Scranton's tax burden. And the thing is, we are the regional hub of Northeast PA. We are the biggest city. Wilkes yeah. Barre doesn't come close. We we have all of the. If we crisscross the states, north, south, east, west, or northeast, southeast, we're, we're, the, hub. we're the hub of northeast. That's PA. why all the nonprofits exist here because we are the hub. Right. And as a result, like I said, thirty six percent of our properties are non taxable. And think of the millions of dollars of value that we cannot tap because of that. And that is a massive problem. It's why uh, us as property owners, that is why our burden is higher. That is why our taxes are higher. And the thing is, the way that the state the, and Couple that with state underfunding, and the states turn around and saying, "Yeah, I know we're shorting you, but you need to chip in even more." That's why there's required tax increases, and it's just not fair for people. Okay, so that's a lot to package. I know, I know. There's and, so much, here. and we need to, and we need to talk to people like me who um, still play golf on the Xbox. Um, I'm trying to open my phone to ask questions, and it won't see the face ID through my microphone. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, I could talk forever. So okay, so all right, so. How I want to get so what I want to what I want to understand is like in simple layman's terms, and I'm and I'm really telling you to dumb it down. I'm, I I do try my best. I'm sorry. I, I try harder. <laughs> so, what? Why is it that that? Um. N- n- okay. So so let's look at where we're at with the money. Sure. Okay. So we've all paid our property taxes. We've all paid our our our, our wage taxes. Eighty six percent of us have paid our property taxes. Fourteen percent are delinquent. Where, what's it like everywhere else? The state average is, I believe, I'm going to say it's like ninety one point eight percent. Pay, pay. And so we're, 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 our collection rate is lower than the state average. And that is attested to. That's a problem that we're going to work on as part of the recovery plan, uh, because if we but that's a single tax office that collects that, right? 
Yes, but then delinquencies move out to a collection agency, and we're going to look at trying to be more efficient with that. Um, when it goes to a collection agency, they take a percentage, and we don't have any control over how they handle it. Uh, the city was offered by the Tax Claim Bureau a couple of years ago, like they do it for 5%. And they have all the records already. They're a government agency that handles tax claims. Yeah. So, you know, I think we're going to look at possibly partnering with them. And no one do- said yes at the time? The city said no. That made that made news, actually. Um, uh, Mayor Court. Yeah, but just because no. it made news doesn't mean. I think I think they shouldn't have done it. They should have done it. They should have. There's, it's a no brainer. I mean, I, I mean, when we're looking at, and I want to get like deep into the, the school stuff as much as we can. Of but course. I mean, are we? Are we? What? What is happening? <laughs> like, what is going on? Like this. This seems like something you'd you'd watch on Hulu. Yeah, going on here, and it's absolutely nuts. It it's and it goes back to the beginning where I'm like, we're the butt of the joke, and it's like, is there a reason why we shouldn't be? Here, here's the weird thing for me. I don't know how anyone in political office can think they're going to get away with anything in the digital era. Well, yeah, like what metadata? Yeah, I mean, so so when you look at everything that broke out with with Courtright. Everything was on tape. Everything was recorded. Every, everything is documented. You, that you didn't think that 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 you were going to get caught. How, how do you how do you have? Well, it's not to say to be a smarter criminal. It's I, just, that's not what I'm saying. Yeah. No, no, <laughs> no, no, no. I didn't think you were saying that. I no, was just, no, no, no. Yeah, but, yeah. but but I mean, the, you're. It's not going to work. Right. There are way too many avenues for law enforcement to go after you. And first of all, the scrutiny when you're a public official is already greater. Right. You know, you're already rightfully held to a higher standard. Is that ego? What is, what is that? And why I, I and why is it pervasive? I have no idea. I mean, I've dealt like, with... Like, does it break your heart in a way? Uh, to see all this shit going? And then you start yeah. finding out all this stuff about who... Yeah. Not not just even, you know, local government. I mean, even in the, the district. Well, local, the, locally... It no, was, I, I mean local government, but I don't I don't mean like Scranton I know, proper. I got, I mean, yeah. I got you. The, so... Courtright, I, I supported him. I, I thought I thought very highly of him. Yeah. And I was blown away. Like that was heartbreaking. You know, yeah. when and, and think about it, you know, everyone in Westside knew Bill Courtright. Yeah. And everyone one their their heads are exploding. Yeah. This was not the person that we knew. Right. But we were we were all we were deceived. So not to compare, but I think they said that about the BTK killer too. <laughs> You know what I mean? They, it's well, always like, well, you never, yeah. There's, there's like this pathology of just like, and, I don't know what it is. That's what I'm I, trying to understand. Is it the coal water? I, I don't know. And I, I think there's there's a couple of facets to it because I've met a lot of different archetypes of politicians sure. in my career, um, or at least my involvement in politics, which has been, you know, I started working in politics probably 15 years ago, volunteering on campaigns, and the archetype. Some of the archetypes are, I'm not doing anything for you unless something happens for me. Now, you can do that kind of like wheeling and dealing if you're like, I have a, a legislative priority, let's compromise. That's yeah. one way you, that yeah. archetype can work. But the other way is you're going to do for, I'll, I'll do for you if you do for me. And it's about being greased. Right. Now, have I witnessed any of that? No. Do I suspect it happens? You know, sure, it obviously happens because we just, just opened the paper with scandals that broke. You know, it's just that. Well, I think it happens in a lot of places. It probably, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's not, I don't think it's unique to Scranton. Um, but you know, hey, we're, we've had every law enforcement agency you could think of, all over the place. I mean, the attorney general's office was just in the Scranton school district what two, three days ago, yep. taking out shredded documents. Yeah. And Wait, you know, currently shredded. They were shred. There was a gigantic bag of shredded documents, and I'm like, what in God's name? You know, what are you, what are people doing? What are people doing? Huh? Yeah, I know that just happened. <laughs> just happened. Yeah, but usually when you shred it, you're like, you get rid of it immediately. People. Like so, that means like recently shredded shit. Yeah, it was very. Oh my god. Yeah. All I, right. So it's headache inducing. <sighs> okay. So um, school district screwed. Let's just th- let's just put it at that right now. Currently, where we where we stand right now, it's it the uh, it's it I, doesn't I, look it it's not as optimistic as we would want it to well, be. Well, passing the recovery plan, I would argue, is something optimistic. Oh, wait, I want I want to get to that. So wh- when did the so. We had, the last time we talked, we're like it's screwed, it's screwed. Like unless big changes happen right now, unless things happen, like, and it, and I read a lot of that, and a lot of the things were the things that you said. Yes. Um, yeah. So when when so an appointment opens on the school board, and you and twelve other people go to get on it, and you finally finally. Yeah, I I put in. I think the times counted. Uh. I think put your so. I ran twice. And, times. <laughs> I ran twice, and then I uh, put in for six appointments. Got it on the sixth. 
Um, a gentleman. I don't um, know what the percentage of that is, but yeah, it's, it's not good. Um, but the thing is, you know, you see how it's borne out over time. Yeah. Things weren't getting better, and I had an opportunity <laughs> to be on the ground floor of this recovery plan. A lot of the ideas that I brought up, that that I've been bringing out there for years, I went through all of the things I published and wrote about in either notebooks or on my website, and I, I wrote them up and gave them to Dr. Finan. And a lot of them ended up appearing here in some form or another. So you, you get in and then like what, like, so like exp- explain to me like how, and, I, and without giving away like inside information or whatever, but like, how does it work behind the scenes? Because you're, you're the guy who's been critical and you then know, you get in there. I love that you asked this question because uh, this is also something I've never talked about, but when I'm not afraid to talk about. So um, there are board members who, before I got on, I disagreed with their actions and called them out for it. So I decided, rather than being a... Oh, you got to stick that back in. What did I do? You grab both damn, and then... Damn it. There, there we go. go. Yeah. So rather than be um, a, a consistent critic, I, I said I said to myself, okay, I'm going to walk in with a blank slate for everybody. You know, any bias that I might have had previously for anyone, gone. Anyone in admin, gone. And... Was that hard to do or was it just no. like, oh, that was that was logical? It, it was logical, but the thing is, I don't have any personal issues with anybody. I, I disagreed with their political decisions and have issues with it to the point where I will work against these people politically and have, um, but I have to work with them. So everyone got a blank slate. But that doesn't come from a place of personal hate. No, no. no, no. It, and I think people need to understand that is like when you're critical of some, somebody, it doesn't mean that it's not yeah. constructive. Yeah. So, uh, and, and that's a thing that not everyone is like, you right. know, there's a... Most those I know some of those people that I've criticized took it personally. Yeah. Um, and and they were legitimate criticisms that yeah. I offered, w- data, evidence, yeah, argument, and there was no reply that that made any sense. <coughs> right. So 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 I walked in. Okay, blank slated. Um, I was everyone worked with me except for one director who doesn't respond to anything that I say, which is fine. Is um, that just you or everybody they don't just, respond to? Uh, a couple people. He doesn't respond to whatever it's his purview. Um, so what, but he's not, I mean, that's not, that's not going to change the tide of anything. It's I, just a vote you'd like to get. It's not even a vote. I'd like to get, I, I, I texted, I'll just tell you who it is. It's Tom Schuster. Um, and I, <laughs> I had legitimate criticisms of him and that he didn't appreciate, which is fine. Um, I didn't appreciate the reasons he gave me to make those criticisms. But I said, okay, Tom, there's a lot of things we can work together on. And I, and the day I got on the board, I shook his hand and I said, I really want to work together with you and I'm looking forward. And uh, I reiterated it more than once, you know, messaged him about issues that I knew we could work together on um, because we have similar perspectives about the way that um, the district was being run from the administrative level. He ignored me. And that's fine. On the, on the other hand, other directors who, who I'd criticized Got along with without a problem. Worked with great. Got a lot of great advice from them and learned from them. And that's how it's supposed to be. It's not personal. Um, and, and I would never criticize anybody, you know, if I didn't have a legitimate reason to do so. Yeah. And if people criticize me, great. I can I can learn and be better. Yeah. Or if they're wrong, I can engage in a dialogue. Yeah. So that's just a personal. Just to come to an understanding, not to yeah, you know, yeah. even if you agree to disagree, you're just coming to an understanding. Yeah. If this is the way I look at it. This and, is the way you look at it. Maybe and, it'll never change. Sure. And, and and part of it has to do with probably the way that I was raised. I mean, I remember one time, um, uh, my brother Mike and I, we were shouting at each other, screaming at each other over something nonsensical. Yeah. And we like we ruined a party. Everyone was like, "We got to get out of here. This is awful." Yeah. And and you were only seven. Yeah. Well, and and. <laughs> And Mike's like, yeah, I was out of line yesterday. I'm like, what are you talking about? He's like, well, I went a little too far. I'm like, what? No, it, no, we were just yelling about a debate. Who yeah. cares? But not everyone operates that way, and I understand that. So the the point that I'm bringing up is I'm completely comfortable being critical of people, and I can divorce criticism from who you are. Right. Because um, I, you know. It's like, not your scarlet A. Yeah, well, there's a lot of people out there that I love to death. But I disagree with. Yeah. I, you know, who cares? Uh, but anyway. I'm friends with a lot of people who like Trump. So. Yeah. So same here. Yeah. So that's exactly where, where I'm coming and I'm from. And I'm like, just, it's just, we're just not talking yeah, well, about so, it. So part one of your question was, you know, how did, how did getting in there work? That was how I operated. <laughs> the second part of it was I started to see how, how administration operated. And I didn't which like it. Which is what you're over, which, which, which is what the board oversees. Yes. And I hated it. And I hated it. So much like viscerally, viscerally, because it was beyond illogical. And the way how that close it, can you relate that hate to cancer? Uh, no, 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 no. <laughs> but like, I knew what I wanted to do as a board member, and I now finally got there and could do something. 
and I was stymied. Um, yeah, but was it slow realization? Or was it immediate? Like, oh immediate. shit! Oh, it was immediate. Uh, because so, um, and I'll just—it's open and out there. So, Dr. Kirian did had had people sign non-disclosure agreements where administrators were not allowed to speak to me and answer my questions. You, you in particular, board members in general, they had to go. Th- you have to go through her. And at, at one point, she listened to a phone call I had with somebody where I was trying to get to the bottom of an issue with the building because I'm on the buildings and grounds committee. And she wouldn't allow this person to speak to me unless she was on the call. And that was bizarre. And I talked to a couple other directors about this and they're like, yeah, it's not even worth it. And I'm like, oh my God, they're all- Wait, so they're, they've all been treated this way. They were defeated and, and, <clears throat> and they were defeated by, really? by this behavior. Yeah, yeah. But where is it? But you oversee that. That's, that's, like, that's, like, that's that, like you owning a company and so you're- That was one of the issues that I could have worked with Mr. Schuster on that he ignored me on and we could have done something about it maybe earlier. But the recovery plan addressed that actually. And now Dr. Kirian has since gone and- there's a different sense of how the build, how the district is going to be run. It's not going to be as. But now wait a second. Now wait a second. Like I remember, like this was like her coming in here and running it was a big deal, and then it was controversial, and it was all this stuff. But I don't understand how someone can come from out of town and kind of behave in the business as usual way. That I wouldn't call her business as usual. Um, so it seems like if it seems like you're high. The effect. Shit. The effect. The effect is that way. It's just her. Her leadership style was. You know, micromanaging or yeah, micromanaging, borderline autocratic. Like the, there, there was no co- co- collaboration. So, um, and there was a lot of uh, no, we can't do that. Whereas the plan is two hundred fourteen pages. There's a lot of yes, we're going to do this. Right. You know, I'll tell you one. The first week on the board, I got a, a, what's called the board packet, which is what we're going to do at the next meeting, and it came via courier. A well, like DHL. A district employee drops it off, like, and I, I'm like, "Can I get this email to me?" I'm like, "Oh, we don't do that," you know, what? like stuff like that. It's like that doesn't make any sense in the digital era. We've been in the computer. Well, they type it out on the computer. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and, and these are big pack. Like, just email me for God's sake. Yeah. But things like that. That's small, but it's indicative of the larger issue. There's just so much backward cultural problems that the recovery plan addresses. That thank God. But but I wasn't able to make moves the way I wanted to make moves. Um, in the, in the time that you, you're given or when I went in the, in the Dr. Kirian realm and she, she is a nice person and a brilliant person. She just stylistically, I just didn't agree with her, her leadership style. At, at but all. I mean, but just that leadership style made some of the board members just not even ask. Yeah. Yeah. That bothered me when uh, I said, I said, do you deal with this? Because now they're not overseeing anything. It's like, it's like going like, what's going on with that, our chemical plant in Peru? And it's like, well, the plant manager won't call you back. It, and you're like, all right, well, we'll let it go. I wouldn't call it a lack of oversight. I would call it like just defeat. Um, they, they did their jobs. They paid attention, but, but it was more like initiatives were stymied. And that was one thing that I tried to work with Tom uh, Schuster on um, because he, he, Hated this NDA stuff, and I and and I did too. I'm like, oh, but how can but how can you force the administration to sign NDAs to not? She should not to have the done board. That. Yeah, she should not have done that. Is it illegal? I I, I would think, or that is it it's very un- nebulous? I would call it nebulous and unenforceable. But again, if you've got your boss saying don't do this, you're not going to be like go to hell. Yeah, but then their boss is saying do it. So what the board could have done was get five votes and say void these. That's what I I, I had tried to do early on, but there wasn't really a willingness and it's not a criticism of, of my fellow board members because they, most of them felt similarly. It's just that everyone came to terms with the ways that they would get done what they need to get done. And I eventually did the same thing. So I have price. So is it the team is now picking single paths? Kind, I mean, is that what kind it is? of, cause it's well, supposed like, to be working together. Yeah. 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 So, so like, let's pretend we want to learn a board member wants to learn something. What would happen? Uh, one told me that I just bypass her and tell them, keep it on the down low. Well, and that sucks, and it works, but it you're being deceptive. Uh, yeah, but it's not really actual deception because you should be able to talk to whoever you want to talk right, to. But you, but you're you're forced to do something yeah. that you shouldn't nor- that you wouldn't normally do in the course yeah, of, of the it, day. Being clandestine when you don't have to be. That <clears throat> That's was, the word I was looking for. Yeah, clandestine. Yeah, and and so the compromise I personally came to was like, I'll ask for the information, and if I'm unhappy with it, I'll go to the source. And I just told her that's how I would behave, and that got me what I needed to get, but it, it's, it was just added hurdles. Um, and, and like when you, like you, you can tell when you walk into a room that there's like an air about it, 
when you walked, when, when you got to, I mean, can you, is there like a palpable air amongst your fellow board members where it's like, it's like, man, we, there's just something that's a little, there's like a, a like a, like a fog or a cloud. I don't, hmm. I don't know how to Politically, romanticize uh, okay. it. Okay. Yeah, no, I got you. So, uh, we get along all of us, even though there are, there is some factionalism. We all, we all get along and, um, and I, you know, I guess I can't speak for everybody, but I know I'm willing to talk to any of them yeah. and, and often do, uh, regardless of their stances. And actually if they, dis- you know, if a board member does something I disagree with, I'll ask, I'll give you a good example. So Bob Lesh, who, who I've occasionally criticized, uh, he, he voted no on, um, appraising Lincoln Jackson and Samuel Morse properties. And that's in the news. Lincoln Jackson is a derelict building needs to be sold. And I thought, I can't believe this guy's vote. No, like what the hell that poor neighborhood. Yeah. So I asked him after the meeting, I'm like, Bob, why, why would you vote no? You're the only guy who voted no. He's like, we did an appraisal in November of last year. Why are we paying three grand again to get another appraisal? We just had an appraisal. And I didn't know that because I wasn't on the board at the time. And I said- Would that have changed your vote? Yes. I said- So I said, how the hell does that happen? Well, so I said, I said, Bob, why didn't you just say that? He's like, ah, it's not worth it. Nobody listens to me. I'm like, speak up. You know, and, and, and that wasn't a criticism of him- uh, in, in the sense that he should, but, but it seems like there's this, there's this, like it, it's almost like you're going to like a sweatshop just to like be there. It's like I got to do what I got to do, but man, I, there's other pl- Th- there other, was other so, places where I'd feel better being. Yeah, I, I I picked up. So we're talking palpable senses. When I got there, um, you know, I, I the the sense that I quickly picked up on was one that like I don't know that pe- people probably wish they could do more than they were doing. Now the sense after the recovery plan is wildly different. The only two board members who voted against it were Greg Popel and Bob Lesh, but even they, I'm sure, will will work with it because we have to. Yeah, uh, we're we're actually legally bound to now. Um, and and the thing is, we can as a board work together to implement it the way that we choose, which is a positive, as opposed to if the state came in, they would just do whatever they wanted. Right. So there's been a sense of optimism once it became clear that the recovery plan had enough votes. And just yesterday at the meeting, like we uh, made a lot of uh, administrative moves that are going to be better for the district. And people are happy about that. We've been working without a director of IT or operations for months. How do you run buildings without a buildings and grounds supervisor? So now we have I don't one. know. Yeah, it makes no sense. Um, how do you run IT in a district of 10,000 students with all the technology we have without a director of IT for eight months? Nonsense. So um, I could almost have a baby by then. Yeah. Yeah. Or, or a premature one. Yes. Yes. Healthy. So, yeah, of course. Yeah. With today's technology. <laughs> Hope they have an IT director at the <laughs> that's, hospital. That's where I was going with that. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know. So wait, so you, so was, was the recovery officer, like, how did that come into play? So she, so we had. Was that, was that before you got on the board? That yeah. That was dealt with? Or, um, or at oh, least no, agreed no. upon? Or No, no, no. So, so those positions that we put on yesterday that's part of our discussion that we have and then they're put on and then we move forward so um it, it worked out perfectly the recovery officer said hey we need to do this here's my recommendation and the board voted unanimously in favor of it simple as that so when did she get involved though uh okay so she there's two levels of involved well i guess you'd call it maybe three stages stage one was the state appointed her um back at, in february and, of 2019 yes okay and when dr kirian left there was a void, um, and it was only a couple of days, obviously, sure. that this has happened. It's just a week ago that all this went down. Right. But um, Dr. Finan became the point of contact for Dr. Kirian's work because she's intimately familiar with the district because she's, she's been required here for to be. Not months, well, yeah. not only, but, but her job was to study the district very, very deeply. And she knows best practices, which Scranton did not follow. But she comes in objectively. Yes, because she's an outsider. Yeah. She, so she. <clears throat> Learned the culture. She didn't grow up with the culture. Right. So there's that. And then the newest phase is now that now that the recovery plan has passed, it's her job to make sure it happens. So now she has a, an added layer of power. So before she was there in kind of like a an observer capacity, and her advice was welcomed by all of us. And she 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 came to all the meetings. She would go to negotiations. She did. She was there, but but she was there passively. Now was she, she able to talk to everybody, every everyone from from the superintendent, administration, yeah. school board? She had to down. She she down had to, to teachers. She could talk yeah. to teachers. Yep, anyone. And she was open enough that anyone who wanted to contact her about anything, she was usually pretty good about getting back to everyone. I've never had anyone complain about that at all. And actually, that's probably a burden to her to to be able to talk to 
that, you know, we have what, 1200 employees, you know, not that, not, not that they're bothering her, but that's just a, a massive workload. Yeah. So now, like I said, she, before she was passive, now she's active. Now she has the tools where she could basically like wield the hammer. So and, over the last six months, what, what, what has happened? Like how, how can the school district say the state can come in and do that? And I'm not, I'm not, I'm not arguing with it. I'm just saying, like, well, like if, if we want to send somebody into your house and check it out. Well, the state placed us in recovery because the district was financially falling apart. So the They're district like, had nothing to say about it. Nope. When you're placed in recovery, it's just the state and came was in that and like. Was that No. Um, it, it, that was the secretary, the Department of Education. They're like, you're falling apart. You have an unsustainable problem with your finances. You can't survive anymore. You're in recovery. Now, what happens is when you're designated in recovery, there's the recovery officer who studies the district and comes right. up with a plan. But you also, and that's free. We get her for free. And we also get her team for free. So the state gives us massive amounts of resources, of expert, experts in every facet of administering a school district that you can think of. Academically, transportation, business. Technology. Technology, everything. Yeah. So we get free audits. We get yeah. free, whatever you can think, engineer, engineering and architectural reports. They're all free. If we didn't oh, have, do they do like infrastructure, like that's, maintenance? Yes. Yeah. Uh, well, they don't do maintenance, but not they, maintenance, but, but say like this it. building needs. Yes. You know. So that yes, that's actually <laughs> happening right now. Um, in one of our buildings, uh, a specific problem is being addressed by by for free for by free. the state, which is great. At no cost to us. Yes. And now that we passed the plan, we for five years have all these free resources. Right. That's huge for us because if we if we didn't. Um, well, A, the state would come in if we rejected all this, but if we weren't in recovery, we would have none of these resources at all. That's not to say that this is great and we need to say rah, rah, but it's the best of a bad situation. So is it like the least stinky plate of shit yes. you can choose? Yep. So how how invested were you, the board members, administration, faculty, um, employees, with talking with her to come to this, you know, we, novella so, recovery so, plan? Um, this was a massively collaborative effort, and I'm, I know I wasn't the only one who came in and said, here are some things that should probably go in here that could be helpful. Right. And, and this is going to change. And it was up to her discretion to say, yep. you know. She would research it yep. and, and get data, and she wouldn't put anything in here without data, numbers, right. research, which is great. So if I said, hey, let's do X. She didn't put anything in there because she felt like it. She would. It would be researched. Her team yep. would look at it. They would come up with a financial input pact, and then it would get in here. So that's. I'm not the only one. You know, teachers, union, maintenance union, clerical staff, right. administrators. You know, these are people who have very deep experience in the district and have seen problems and offered ways to address them. And they helped formulate this plan. So, what? So what does this look like for us? Because I'm a business owner in Scranton. I'm a I, I live in Scranton. Um, I just got married. If I have congrats if once I again. Happen to have thank it was you. a beautiful wedding. It was fun. It was fun. That was my only edict to everyone. I'm like I don't if it goes to shit, roll with it. Let's just have fun. I mean, you ended with killing, killing in the, the name, name by the which lightweight it, was awesome. The my band lightweight yeah, was phenomenal. My favorite song of all time. Is that what it is? I love. I Do love really? that. I'm a huge rage fan. Well, maybe that's because of your oppositional defiance. Yes. Yes. <laughs> that makes perfect sense. So, I mean, so, you know, there's, so I wanted to kind of have you in here too, because, you know, I want to talk about the recovery plan. I want to talk about what it means to the students, the employees, the administration, the board, um, wh what it means for the, the, especially the taxpayer. Um, and then this whole movement about, which seems like this, this, it's, it's started, it's like the, the, not the Irish spring, but something in Scranton that is, is riling up the folks to, to get for, to fight for fair funding. Yeah. So, so you just asked a million things. You pick what you want me to start with and I'll talk um, about how what, it what are, the okay. Group. So what are, so it, okay. So let's do this. Is the tax increase a, a, a sure thing? No. So, um, the 6.7% is the maximum that we'll be able to raise taxes <laughs> if the state approves it. Um, we have a $1.7 million deficit with a 6.7% percent increase which means we're in rough shape and Even this, with the tax increase you're in rough shape yes and we are not allowed to borrow that is we can't we it, the state said too bad you will never borrow what's the tax increase 6.5 6.7 6.7 why can't it be 7.2 uh because it, you're still short. it's legally capped um so if it wasn't legally capped would, would there have been an option for a higher there would have been an option but it's not going to be 6.7 okay. percent so and i'm just the reason i'm telling you that is because I can do something about it as a board member. Um, and Dr. Finan's going to do something about it as the chief recovery officer. 
And I'll just give you a couple of examples. So right now we're engaging in a bunch of cost savings initiatives. So a couple of buildings that had vice principals aren't going to have vice principals. So that's, you know, probably, you're probably looking at a $250,000 savings if you include benefits. Um, but just real quick, you're an educator, so you know what that means to a school if well, that happens. I, so it's not going to be, you would you probably wouldn't suggest that if it was detrimental. I would not. So like elementary schools should just have one principal and that's it. And if you can't handle the building, then we're going to have to talk about your job. Yeah. So that's going to save us a fortune. Um, we're probably not going to have an acting superintendent for probably a year. We paid Dr. Kirian per her buyout, but that will actually save money on that. So just those things that I just mentioned are going to save us. Um, so that one point seven million dollar deficit is going to go down to like one point five, one point four. That just happened. So we can already see that we're chipping away. And when we get that $1.7 million figure down to zero, then anything we save, we can, okay, it's not going to be 6.7, it's going to be 6. Oh, it's not going to be 6, it's going to be 5. Oh, it's not going to be 5, it's going to be 3. And that's my personal goal because the taxpayers in the city so get if there killed. Was not, so if there was not the 6.7, what do we say? 6.7. So if there wasn't a 6.7% tax increase, where, how far off would we be? Three, Best guess. 3.4 maybe? I believe it. it's either 3.4 or 4.7, and I apologize because that's a wildly different number. You probably, you've noticed that I've been throwing numbers at you like crazy. Uh, it might be, might be, it might be four and a half million around there. So don't quote me. I'm going to say between three and four million. So and it, we'll it takes it care of what? what that would get half, three million. Yeah, that would that would knock our tax increase down significantly. And, and yeah, but the and tax increase is to cover the ass of the two to three million. Yes. Okay, yeah. and then the rest of it is chipping it's away. De- yes, is the deficit. So um, th- th- there's a lot of things that we're going to be able to do. So I know, so there's going to be negotiations with the teachers union. Yeah. So let's say we're able to bid out health care. Have an they in- not been? We have, so we can bid Wait, out. When you talk, can you, can you tell about the logical things that you think that haven't been done? That yeah, just, so. Like when you go, sure. like, we're going to bid out health care, like this is a logical thing that hasn't that been done. That is a logical thing that yeah. hasn't been done. Because so the way it works with teachers union contracts, at least the way this one is written, um, and in my, I'm a teacher at Riverside, so mine is like this too. Um, you can, the district can switch healthcare providers so long as the union agrees and so long as it's equivalent care or service. Of what they had. Yes. So apples to apples. If yeah. you're going to switch providers, the provisions have to be the same. So we're just going to do that. Um, in the past, the union's been skeptical, and I could understand why, because their contract, um, while it's much better than it's been, they they still have a long way to go to 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 reach neighboring districts. So what'll probably happen, and this doesn't necessarily have to be contract negotiations. It could be what's called a memorandum of understanding, which means you could do it quicker. Is if we bid out the healthcare, get an administrator or a plan that is equivalent to what they have, but is administered for less money. That's instantaneous savings, and it's probably going to be in the millions. I don't know if you remember, but a couple of years ago, the district in the millions just to just millions. And wait, I, could, wait, could you cover the gap just by switching the healthcare? Yes. So, um, the and, and I'll give you a concrete example. I'm going to say, what was it? Five? You said this was a logical thing. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I'm yeah. still. I'm, I mean, I'm, I've been, I'm with you. I'm with you. Uh, yeah. So, so okay, I'm, just, I'll give, I'm just fascinated. Well, yeah. So, so I'll give you a concrete example. The district did this once before, probably five years ago. They forced Highmark and Geisinger to bid to get into a bidding war with each other and reduce their administrative costs by two million per year for healthcare. For healthcare why not why do it yearly for all i care i mean or, or well, my dad's business did that every year they would they would they would make me an offer yep this exactly is what we have can you do better yes so so i think you're going to see movement on that and that will help close the deficit and and plug the budget gap and if we make enough savings because don't forget you're looking at a district with with you know well over a thousand employees i mean the teachers union itself has maybe 950 members something like that that's a massive, massive savings. So it might be more than $2 million. Um, and, and the plan says that when we get extra money, we need to start escrowing it and saving it to try to give these people raises. Basically a rainy day. Yeah. Well, and, and also more, rainy day and also to get treat, back to zero. Well, yeah. And, but, but look at these teachers. These are highly educated professionals who are, who are working without a raise. And that's not fair. So the plan even says, like, look, as we save money, we're going to set aside some of it to get it to you. 
So that also incentivizes the union to jump in and say, here are ways that we know you can save. We're going to help you on that. And healthcare is an easy one to bid it out. Um, I mean, are we at the point right now where it's like, forget about yesterday? Totally forget about I'm glad about you it. said that because uh, that was the sentiment of a lot of the speakers at last night's meeting. Like, yes, we need to learn from our past and learn from our mistakes. The plan did that and is doing that because you're looking at everything we've done wrong and like here's a way to fix it. Well, past animosities, past... That doesn't help. Yeah, so, I mean, is that is that... Do you think that that's the way to move forward is to, is to acknowledge it, study it, learn from it, yeah, but you and, can't live there? Yeah, I, and I'm going to add one facet to that. So I'm going to say 95... I agreed 95% of the way with what you just said. The 5% is anyone who gets indicted, charged, whatever... This district needs to sue them civilly for damages. So the restitution. Oh, that's doing. interesting. Oh God, yeah. So okay. I, I, so continue. Yeah. So, um, and I'm gonna. That's something I'm working on. So the Greg Sunday had to pay nine thousand. Under 000. what? Under what? Well, law. So so civilly. civil law. Like what's yeah, but what's the complaint? What's so the they. So um, someone tries to run you over with the car. Yeah. Intentionally, Vehi- yeah. you know, attempted vehicular homicide. Yeah. They're going to get charged with the crime. Right. But then you could also sue them for damages. Right. So when Greg Sunday got charged with a crime, he was forced by the court to pay like eight grand in restitution. He was responsible for. So you can sue him civilly because he was guilty of the criminal. So, so, he's, so we're going to sue him for damages, financial damages for what he's done. I want to do that because he was responsible for the Sansky issue. And God knows what else he was responsible for because this is still an ongoing process. Um, I want to start going after him immediately for the dollars that he was responsible for us losing. And, you know, he, I, I'm learning that this guy... Is that a, is that suggested in there? It's not, um, but it could be done anyway. Like, just because it's not in is here... Is that a fluid it, document? Yes, yes, thank God. That's one of the reasons why I'm supportive of it. Because I know that there's some bad, dark things in here. But I know that if we do some positive, wonderful things those dark things can go away. Well, I don't understand how you steal hundreds of thousands of dollars and only pay like six bucks. It doesn't make sense. Yeah, shouldn't you be Shouldn't you be on the hook for what you took? And what you allowed others to take. And what you, yeah, yeah, absolutely, well then, then well that, that's spider web. Well, it is a spider web because we know that Sansky um, built the district for a fortune by fa- through fake billing that was directly enabled by Greg Sunday. So let's get a dollar amount, let's sue him for that, plus interest, Plus punitive damages, and I don't and I don't care. He 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 is a criminal. He is partly responsible for the fiscal shithole that this district has become, and for him to barely get away or to, to barely be punished, it was a slap on the eight grand and what three years probation. Give me a break. You ran this district, and, and you utilized it as as a resource for yourself for revenue for you. That is unconscionable in my world, and he he. And great, he's cooperating. He's turning evidence over. Great, doesn't doesn't make punishment you, isn't fitting the crime. Doesn't make you any less guilty. That's weird coming from a liberal. You you pay if I That's screw up. I'm just, I I'm, pay. Just, I'm just I'm just pointing out where it's like. Why is that weird for a liberal? Justice is like liberal. That, it's like let's fucking destroy everyone. <laughs> hey, no, I'm like that too. Or I'm like I'm like in the chair. Liberals can destroy people. I, it just K- seems K- like Guevara was a I liberal. Just, I'm just trying to let everybody realize that you know <laughs> we're all a little bit purple. At the I, end of the day, we're all hey, a little bit purple. I'm I'm I'm, for, I'm all about guns. I mean, can you talk about that? Talk about what the the punitive and I mean that hasn't, I am that I'm hasn't just talked that hasn't it. been that but that hasn't been talked about yet, has it? Not publicly, but I mean, I'll tell anyone what I'm doing. <laughs> I mean, that's but you're pursuing it. You you yeah. you want it as an active measure. Yeah, and I'm yeah, I absolutely want it as an active measure. So um, I had and being that they just came and stole, not stole, but took out all the shredded paper. It seems to think that this this isn't there's the more. end. There's more. Oh God, yeah, they were there all day. Two days ago, they were there all day. Well, what do you think to the criticisms where people say something along the lines of like, well, you know, the board should have been paying more attention and the board should have been doing this. You know, so I don't think people understand how the system works. I'm glad that's another question i'm glad you're asking um so board members don't run day-to-day operations that's not our job so while i do my best to be in, to, to engage in oversight i, I i'm never going to know the numbers i'm never going to know you know this guy did this at three o'clock you know that's not my job my job is to engage in policy oversight uh and so like big picture stuff yes 
So, so, but, but the way that I could affect the smaller stuff is it's my job to make sure that people are doing their jobs and if they're not, they go. So I, I'm not afraid to get rid of people who aren't doing their jobs and I'm not afraid to hire people that I know are good. And one of the things that we did that I, yesterday that I think was very innovative is a lot of the new hires and administrative restructuring that we just did yesterday is done on an acting basis. That means that these people get like a one month trial period, basically. Like you're just going to be the acting head of X. And if you're good at it, you can stay. And if not, you're going to go back to what you did and we're going to find somebody else. No and, harm, no foul. Exactly. And that's a smart way to run things. And everybody agreed to that. Yep. It was, it was unanimous. Uh, it was not a 9-0. Well, even, even the people who got, I guess you would say promotions maybe. <laughs> Here's the other thing. A lot of the people who got promotions, they're not getting extra money. They, they're just stepping up. That's another kind of thing is there's a sense of optimism among a lot of these people that like maybe we're going to turn a corner. Okay. So when you t- you got, I, I totally forgot my question. Well, I mean, the, like, literally I could talk about anything forever. Yeah, yeah. So I can, I can do whatever. Okay. So, um, I feel like I'm part of the Oh, can I, can I ask about the departure of the superintendent? Sure. Well, that seems sudden. It, it, it blindsided me, probably the other directors too. Um, she had expressed that she wanted to stay on for the length of the recovery plan or just be done with the whole thing, basically. And So uh, it's, it's all and so, or nothing. Basically, and uh, we, we could have forced her to stay to June 2020 if we wanted to, which was the end of her contract. But it, makes, it made more only, sense. Which is only, what, like 11 months from, or no, 10 months from now. Yeah, but buying her out made a little bit more sense to obviously to the board because we did it. And I'll tell you why it made sense to me. We're the, the plan just passed yesterday. We're at a period of transition. Um, so it's almost like the wipe to say, shake the etch a sketch. This couldn't have been a better time. Maybe. Yes. Yes. And like I said, you know, she, she's a very, very, very intelligent and capable woman. I just disagree with her leadership style. And when it comes to uh, the recovery plan, you know, it, it's just better this way for everyone. Um, for all the employees, I think, for students, for board members. And we're going to move in a different direction with a different leadership style. Um, you know, like I said, we have this recovery officer provided by the state. She's not the acting super or anything like that, but she has the power to enforce the plan. And that's a lot of power. And that's, what, does that, what does that mean? You know, so, even so, though it's a fluid document. What, so let me ask you this. When enforce, when augment? So enforce, so there are a lot of dates. A lot of things have to be done by August 31st, which is crazy. Wait, like two weeks from now? Oh, yeah. So <laughs> there are benchmarks for a lot of things. Like, Holy shit. Oh, come on. Well, there, there, are, there are departments that do everything by paper only. What? Yeah, I heard you talking about this in WILK. It's, like, it's nonsense. So, so digitize. Is, there's no, is there no internal education for how to, we'll work how to sign into your No, that's just, it's just portal. a matter of they've done it that way forever, so they keep doing it that way. And now we're going to just stop that. You know, things like that are things yeah, that we can Why is that mentality still... Well, that's the way we always did it. Why does that, why does that still go... Th- like, why, does, why does that philosophy still carry legs? Um, I don't know. I'm going to give a personal means. example. I can't read books on a Kindle. Okay. I, I just... I'm too used to print. And I'll never be able to figure out the whole Kindle world. Maybe it's just that... Yeah, but you're not reading books for a living. Well... I'm an English teacher. Yeah, I get it, but you, you've already read them. <laughs> True. Um, You're rereading them. Yeah, I know, but, but my, my point is that I guess the people get used to things and they don't know that there's a better way. Um, and that's not to say that it's okay. It's not. But the plan addresses that. And she, when she walked in there and saw, like, this makes no sense, this makes no sense, this makes no sense, we're going to fix it. And that's and so she her job is going to be, okay, this has to be done. There are dates for every single thing in this plan. There are literally 100 initiatives and then there are like side initiatives they all have completion dates all of them so every are they all reasonable or within reason or just some you, of them you don't are, have a choice these you just to- don't have a choice but but they're they're within reason and reasonable in the sense that they're completely accomplishable and if somebody can't accomplish it then we need to look at why are you doing the job and i think that that's fair and and on the amendable side of things let's say we come up with some great ideas um for cost savings that we had not thought of before. They can get in there, and then instead of the 3.4% tax increase that's called for in the plan, it can be 3, or it can be 2.5, or it could be 0. Wait, where'd that 3.4 come from? Uh, so Wait, there's two tax increases? Yes and no. I'll explain. 
So the plan says we need to raise taxes 3.4% every year for five years. But because our deficit is so huge, yeah. um, we had to ask the state for permission to raise it 6.7% if we need it. So the plan says- so on if, the low side. Yeah. So the plan says that if we're super broke, we can go above 3.4. And we're super broke. So that's where the 6.7 comes in. So at, at a minimum- Right now, people can look at three point four or three point two or whatever. Three point four. I would say it's it's probably that's probably the minimum. But if we get if we save money quickly, which I think we we are that'll go down. That'll that'll go down. And and we want directors. We want it to go down. Nobody wants people paying more taxes. Scranton is dealing with an unfair burden. Plus, we're engaging in this fair funding fight that you mentioned. Yeah, I wanted to get into that. Well, well, let's pretend the state. But, but so it seems something new. Like I said to you, where it's like, oh, the, look, there's a moon in the sky. Like I said before, you know what 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 happened where that now became a thing where everybody got enlightened to it because it seemed before it was like, f the board, f the union. F all of them, and now all of a sudden it's like the state's not being fair. So three years ago, P.J. Duffy actually found this out through Sarah Hofius Hall because she's from Erie, and Erie figured it out and then fought the state and got $14 million a year in recurrent funding plus a one-time... $14 million a year every year. Yeah. plus a Extra. Four, plus a $14 million one-time, we're sorry about this grant. So that happened. They did their fight, and they won. So P.J., uh, Duffy learned about this three years ago through Sarah at, and at the Times. And so what happened was he started bringing this up. And he said, and he says it better than me, but he pointed out, he said, everyone was just dis- saying it's not going to work. They're not going to give us anything. We tried. It's over with. And he kept fighting and fighting. He would go down to Harrisburg. He would. He called the people in Erie, state reps, board members, superintendent. What did you do? How did you do it? How can we do the same? And then three years ago, we got a $2 million grant and one-time funding. And then, so that was three years ago. Two years ago, I believe it was a $6 million grant one time. And then this year, it was a $6 million recurrent funding boost plus a $4.3 million grant. Now, in that interim, Paul ran the numbers uh, with our business administrator, Pat Laffey. I grew up with Pat. Good guy. We grew up on Grandview Street, yeah. Oh, nice. Pat is a... Pat is phenomenal. He was one of my best friends when I was a kid. What yeah, happened? Tell him I said hi. I moved. I moved from Green Ridge up to the richer people. I don't know if they're richer in Clark Summit. Green Ridge has some money. I think they do. Yeah. I yeah. went from there. He's still he's still over that we way. We downsized. Yeah. Well, although we felt better well, about pa- ourselves. Pat is excellent at his job, and, I'm, I, and I am so glad. Yeah, tell him I said hi, man. I absolutely will. So, so well, you guys actually did scientific math. Yes. Pat's good at his job, so he did it. And, and, and the numbers were this. So, um, wait, was that one of those like, uh, I need you to come down here. We needed to talk. Um, it was like more you, like cause, PJ. Cause usually, when you hit equal, you're like, uh oh. Yeah. P- PJ more or less said, we need to look at these numbers, figure it out. We, they pulled some data from the state and came up with some stark figures. Uh, so, of all the urban districts in Pennsylvania, we are the least funded by a lot. So, as of last year, we were getting $4,350 per kid in basic education funding. York in this year's proposed budget was passed for York, nine thousand per kid. Nine. What? Yeah, but what dictates funding where and why? The formula doesn't really make any sense, um, but it's a formula, and it can be augmented by the legislature and governor, which is what happened. Wait, so, so they can actually come in and say two plus two equals seven? Yeah, and they did that for other districts and legislative. We we have two representatives and a state center. And that's it. We are, and they're, and we're the only urban district in Northeast Pennsylvania. Wilkes-Barre is considered a suburban district because it encompasses the region. Right. So, as a result, we don't have any real massive grouping of representation that will fight for us. Whereas, you look at the Lehigh Valley, they have a lot of representatives. You look at York, Reading, and Lancaster, they can band together because they're near each other. We don't have companions in this fight. And so every year other districts are getting more and we're remaining stagnant. So we're on like an Appalachian Island. It's yes. And it's, it's pretty horrendous because you know, we did the numbers and we needed 18.9 million extra dollars per year to be average. And that's just basic education funding. I didn't even talk about special ed. We didn't even talk about transportation funding. We're also shortchanged there. So the 18.9 million is only our basic subsidy. So 
the state we said per we, year, every year, per year, every year, in perpetuity, in perpetuity. We if if they if they didn't if they fixed this five years ago, every building would look like the Taj Mahal. Imagine if we had almost twenty extra million dollars a year, we would not have gotten rid of librarians. We would not have gotten rid of programs. So we would not be talking about closing schools or raising taxes. So who's who's sleeping outside Jeffrey Epstein's cell? <laughs> Was that Nobody. Crass? It's too soon. No, uh, no. I just he's a scumbag. He his a, a, I wish, a piece of human filth and yeah. um deep and state he escapes. I, I don't believe any of that. I just I'm just saying it just seems there are irregularities. It's it it just seems you know yeah. So um, not JFK crazy, but yeah. So so who's not minding the store? It's I, it's a combination of unwillingness of the legislature to help us because what's the incentive? What do they get? Scranton's not going to really deliver massive amounts of votes for. A Republican in southwestern Pennsylvania. I don't give a shit. Your kids are going to get educated. They don't. Why would they give a shit about Scranton's kids when they could be getting money for their own? Um, and that is a sad state of affairs. But that's what's going on. So you actually have to, like, if you're a school district, you can't just, as a school district, send send your whether it's board members, superintendents, representatives, whatever, down to Harrisburg to say, "Hey, let's redo the numbers and see where we're at this year." Why hasn't it? Why we, do we I? Do why that. Do, yeah, but why do I have to go to an elected official to make that happen when it's just it's They're just supposed to be math? Yeah. Well, so well, they made the math, so that's what we get. So we're screwed by the math. Um, Our people did. No, no, no. The, the state made the math, and the math screws us. Right. That's basically what's happening. So we have gone down to Harrisburg. Many board members have gone down. Many. I contact. I communicate with legislators all the time. PJ Duffy especially contact. He he talks to legislators up and down the state. Um, routinely, does he have a do not enter building <laughs> against? Him? You know, he he's. I haven't met him, man. I heard he's a good, great, dude. great guy, great guy, and he's he's made um, no, he's made a lot of friends. I, I don't think he's had negative reactions, uh, and he has had success. I mean, this six million dollar recurrent funding this year is great, but the governor tried to get us ten point five, which is still short, but it would have balanced our budget. You know, it would have helped us balance our budget in the future because next year we're gonna have to fight this fight again. That's the problem. So next yeah, year, we, we talked in one of the first podcasts about next year we're going to have to fight this fight again. Now we're in a, we're doing it again. Yep. It's a year later. Yes, and that's that's why this fair funding issue is so important. It's but, but, but why is it now coming? Like why is it now? Because, like in the last two weeks, because people realize that that. So here's why. Um, I'm not shitting on Paul Duffy. I'm no, just no, 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 no. Yeah, I'm just he was doing it, but and it's funny because uh, he was, you know, Paul. Paul's happy to engage people on Facebook, and somebody called out the board for not doing anything, and he's like, "Oh, really?" And he just started posting pictures of himself in Harrisburg at various points of the year. Um, he's like, "No, I've been working on this. No, the media just hasn't been paying attention." And there's no pay. Yeah. Oh, we don't get paid. We just do this out of a labor of love. Um, Is there a masochism there? You know. Some people probably have ambitions and want to pop up to a new level of, and you see it's it. It's a great way to get your training wheels. Yeah, I, yeah. I guess. Um, I don't think of it that way for myself because I have a specific goal I want to accomplish. I, I don't give a shit about council mayor. Or, right. or, I'm not going anywhere. I'm, I'm, I'm here to serve as a school director. And I think there are some of us who feel that way. And then there are others among us who are like, okay, I'm going to learn and, and do other things. So I, I would, yeah, I wouldn't not, call it a that's, ma- that's not to like, you know, no, say whatever. It's shitty. It's just no, it's you, just, you, you do what you, you're do. doing your path. Yeah, you do you. Yeah. Um, but but so is it a masochism? No, I think it's just a desire to do good, what no matter what it takes, especially for for PJ because he definitely works way harder than anybody should for zero dollars. So, um, we started making headway when so when I got appointed on the board, um, there was so Greg Popel was appointed a couple months before me, and PJ, Greg, and I and Barb Dixon, the board president, we we would get together. And we were talking about this, and PJ's like, we just have to hit every PTA. And he invited the whole board to do it, but the four I just mentioned are the only ones who, who really ever did. And I missed, I think, only one PTA meeting, and it was because my wife was in labor. Wait, how many? Wait, how many? Se- 17. How many people are on the board? Oh, there are nine. Um, and and I he, think, could, he couldn't even get 50% to go? No. Um, I saw one board member at one meeting, and I know that two others did one building. But it, it, we went to almost 17 of them. Plus, we went to neighborhood meetings because people were inviting us to educate them about the issue. We just went. <laughs> Are you going to rant, like just Scranton PTA meetings or yep. just other? Scranton, Scranton. Um, so just to hear the people? Just to tell them what how they're getting killed. So, hey, by the way, the state thinks that your kid's worth half a kid from York. Like, I'm going to have kids going to the school district. The I mean, state, that, was, that was Paul like, let's go. Let's yeah, all Paul, go. Paul's like, we've got to do this. And so we came up with the PowerPoint as a group and we gave this PowerPoint 
to every PTA. And everyone's like, are you kidding me? And then um, a woman named Michelle Dempsey from Prescott's PTA. So she started this petition um, because she was so appalled, rightfully so. And it took off. And I think we had over 5,000 signatures that we delivered down down to Harrisburg. And that was organic. Had nothing to do with... When was this, though? That happened. The petition, she probably started it in March. And... Um, and it was very, and it was successful. And the media started noticing that we were doing this, and then they started reporting on it. And then we had a rally for fair funding that the union jumped on board on. We had like 250 people in front of Scranton High School talking about what's happening to us. And we brought in speakers from around the state who uh, who are part of organizations. One of them is called PA Schools Work, where groups are suing the state because the Constitution of the state of Pennsylvania says everybody is guaranteed the right to a, 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 a meaningful education. And and we're not getting it because we need money to have it. Well, I don't like the word meaningful because it's open to interpretation. Uh, so so I, it's not the word meaningful. It's like it's like efficient and adequate. I, I forget the exact wording, but it's some, It's definitely not happening. Right. And and we're probably, I think the lawsuit's going to get heard in, in summer of 2020. Um, and Scranton is thinking of joining it if we're able. And What would uh, it take to join that lawsuit? It's pro bono, so they just have to say, Yes, you may join, and then file some paperwork. So, so, so <clears throat> obviously, Paul Duffy's done a lot of, a lot of yeah. He's background. Le- on he's this. basically the the leader of the pack with this. So, I mean, do you 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 call balls and strikes pretty fairly? That's what we were, you know, I you're stabbing in the heart. Yeah, I mean, do you? Is there any doubt in your mind that that the 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 taxpayers? And the students and the parents of the students and the administration and everybody are getting screwed. Absolutely screwed. 100%, no questions asked, screwed. So then it's how did, in but, the numbers. So then how did you not pick up on this? Or you just thought somebody was doing it? No, no, no. I, 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 I know. I've known PJ for some time. I knew. For three years. Yeah. I, I, I've, I've known since he knew. Right. Um, and we've talked about it often. What was that phone call like? <laughs> the first one. It was like, I can't freaking believe this. This is ridiculous. But, but, but when... That was when he knew that it was happening, and then he educated himself and worked on it. And then the more we saw numbers, the more ridiculous it appeared. Um, because it's not like the state advertises like, "Hey, f you, Scranton." They're not going. That's not part right. of their budget process. They just do it, but they don't say it. So, um, what do they think? We're the Alabama of PA? Probably. Uh, actually, the <sighs> Alabama of PA gets better funded. Um, <laughs> 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 it's true. The Republicans control the legislature, so they take uh, care of their yeah, own. Yeah, 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 so, so um, the the thing is that everyone needs to understand is that if we get this fair funding, if we keep the fight up and we pressure these people in Harrisburg, which has been working, because the amount of money they're giving us every year has been more. It's still just not enough. Yeah, but you, yeah, but now it's it seems before it was been like you know you know, twenty two caliber bullets you guys have been shooting, and now it's like get oh, us this a is howitzer. Growing, yeah, this is getting big. So yeah, so there's there's a couple things in the works. <laughs> So like where uh, it's like it, so it needs to move quick. Yeah, I think so. And and you know, the, there's two major facets to this that I think can be super helpful. Number one, a gentleman by the name of Mike Williams, who he ran for the school board two years ago, but he he noticed this and he said, "I'm gonna I'm just starting a group," and they had a meeting on um, this past Monday at Trip Park Community Center. Well over 200 people were there. It was out the door. Um, you couldn't fit people. And he has a plan. He said, "We're gonna get buses. We're gonna go to Harrisburg." while they're in session, and we're going to disrupt them and let them know that Scranton deserves to be treated equally. If there's one thing that politicians hate... Bad press. Bad press and angry and people. outside your and, office. And, and yes. Yeah. I mean... Yeah. Can I jump out the fourth story I, window? You know what? I remember I remember. Um, I was about to go on strike at, at Riverside a couple <coughs> years back, and I talked to a lot of labor leaders and asked them for advice. And we didn't end up doing this, uh, but they, they're like, you know what you should do? Here's my advice. Find every board member's address and pick it out outside their houses. They hate that shit. <laughs> <laughs> and that really sticks in my mind. I, I would, Because it's the only way you're going to get effective change. Yeah, yeah. Like, I don't, you know, it's like when, when so, like when Tucker, Car- Tucker Carlson bitches that someone yelled at him at a restaurant. Like, oh, I have a private life. Well, you're ruining people's lives with some of that crazy yeah. shit that you say. You deserve to be held accountable for what you do. Right. You know, own it. No matter where you are, you're like a public if you're, figure, you're man. Public you, you figure. chose it. Yeah, and 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 I've gotten castigated by people for my choices. Some people are really pissed at me for this. Yeah, you've, but you've also cast. No, I wouldn't say castigated, but you've also you know been like I, you've I'll never enga- confronted anybody like well, an aggressive no, manner. No, 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 and nobody's been really terrible with me. But even but I can handle myself, and I always respond. But that's the name of the game here. 
Um, so I, so Mike wants to have that protest. And one of the things I would love to see in Rosemary Bull and the president of the Scranton Federation of Teachers hinted that this might be a thing. Um, I would love to see the Scranton Federation of Teachers call a strike and, and get on buses and strike in Harrisburg. Because when you call a strike, your whole union has to go. Right. Um, so get the whole damn union. Get them on buses to Harrisburg and have administration and school board members go with them. That would make national news because no strike has ever occurred where the administrators all together went so are on the side of the strikers. It doesn't work that way. That would be one of the most powerful statements that I've I probably I've seen in the modern union movement. If you see all the and get parents on, get parents on, get kids on. Who's going to pay for it? Um. That's what Mike is. There is there an angel investor that we could? Well, the union, the union would have the resources to cover their own members. I would imagine there's all. Yeah, but they're not going to pay for the school board to go down, would they? I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'll, if you're all going there I'll together, pay, I'll pay for a caravan. But um, <laughs> we, we've but we've had people at Mike Williams' event. You know, people said like, "I'm going to give you money. I'm donating a bus. I'm donating a bus." We, so there's a lot of people who've lined up to say like, "Look, this is a real fight. I understand it's real. I understand that Scranton's being screwed. That taxpayers are going to bear the brunt of this unless the state." actually treats us well, correctly. Is that because they're in Harrisburg and it's like out of sight, out of mind? I think that's a part of it. But, you know, we have a Republican legislature and what does Scranton do for them? Nothing. What, nothing. And what, we, what can we do for them? We have two representatives and a state senator. We're, we're, we don't have the influence to do what needs to be done. So we need to start applying pressure. Is that, yeah, but do we have that 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 little representation because of population, or what? Yeah. what, what is the thing? That it's, so it's like that? I said earlier, we're we're the only urban district in Northeast PA. The, our our regional representatives they have their own priorities, but they because the thing is, and I mentioned urban very specifically because it's an actual state designation. There's urban districts, suburban districts, and rural districts, and they all have very different needs. And the state law and school code address those needs in a different way. So we don't have people locally that we can band with to address our needs because it, it's not their purview. Now, of course, do we have representatives who are friendly to us? Sure. Bridget Malloy is, is excellent. Um, uh, Mike Carroll is phenomenal. I love him. But, but you know, you start expanding out there and you're looking at, you know, representatives who, why are they going to go stick their neck out for Scranton when they've got their own districts to worry about? And that's the philosophy. But if we start applying pressure, maybe we can get them to pay attention to us. And, and, and let's keep the pressure up. I mean, and, but let's say you get the money. What happens to the recovery plan? It, if, okay, let's pretend we got $18.9 million. Let's say tomorrow they're tomorrow. like, look, we, here's the we, money. We're we've sorry. been unfair. Yeah. Every problem we can imagine is immediately solved. But, That's not actually but, even hyperbole. But, but all those things that are suggested are probably not bad things to do. So, yes. So, what, the only things that would be amended would be financial. The, the largest part of this recovery plan is academic <laughs> achievement. That's awesome. So we can so the still do part, that stuff. So the largest part of that is is how do we how do we help these kids better? Yep. And 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 so basically the plan we get that 18.9 million. We're not going to exit recovery. What'll happen is the financial pieces of the plan will change. The academic pieces will change because we can maybe afford to bring back librarians. The 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 facilities That really chaps your ass. It it kills me. I don't know how you have a school without a librarian. We are living in the era of fake freaking news and we got rid of information literacy specialists. Are you freaking kidding me? Like what? Yeah. We, tr- people question the nature yeah. of truth. Yeah. At this point. And and librarians are that's their Damn job. Yeah, it's kind of like going like, hey, Pete, you got that peanut allergy still? And Pete's like, yeah, you got those peanuts? I want to eat those. Yeah, yeah. It doesn't make any and sense. I, I'm an English teacher, and I teach 11th and 12th grade. I teach AP. I teach honors, and I'm a good researcher, and I understand how to handle that, and I've got nothing on a librarian. Nothing. Nope. They're in, a, they're in their own league. They are better than I am by a long shot, and I love them, and I love working with librarians, and Scranton has none. It's so offensive to me. How how hard did he, how long and hard did Erie have to fight? So it so last year was when they finally got parity, and it took them about two three years. So this might be a two three year fight. I I think so. It has been a two three or three year fight. Already has been. Yeah, because P, PJ helped. Uh, well, I, thought they, I thought they had to do like a lawsuit or something like that. Well, that's part of it, and that is happening. But oh, Erie didn't sue. Oh, I thought they they, did. they just they. They, they just they, harass they, them enough to yeah basically so um but we've already been getting these injections of funding through is it still cheaper than giving us what we think we're owed well it's it doesn't not seem like it's not handout. shutting us up anymore that's number good, one good um, but number two some people accuse 
uh, oh, you're getting a handout. Oh, you're going to misspend it. It's not a handout, not a bailout. It's what we're owed. It's absolutely what we're owed. Because we, everybody else got it. Yep. Here's the thing. You're going to love this statistic. So the average, for us to get to average, we would have needed $18.9 million. For us to tie with second to last, we would have needed six, 16.4. So next to last is 16.4 million more than we are. That's disgusting. Wait, explain that to me again for my fragile little mind. All right. So for Scranton, who was on the bottom, yeah. to get average, 18.9 million was what we needed. For us to tie with the per, the, with the with the next the closest? next shittiest district <laughs> in terms of funding. In terms of funding. In terms of funding, not performance. Yeah, yeah. It's sixteen point four million. So how much are we getting now? Nothing. They only added six million. So how much is it every year right now? Oh, uh, with the new about forty six hundred per kid, up from forty three fifty. How kid. much is that total when we talk about these eighteen million, sixteen million? Um, I don't have the exact state subsidy dollars in that figure off the top of my head. How many kids in the head. school district? Uh, about ten thousand three hundred ish. So we probably get like uh four point six or five million, right? What? Add another zero. Forty million. If if we're doing the math that way, then yeah. No, you said ten thousand forty some hundred a kid. I just did math. Did I do the math wrong? Oh, uh, you just need an extra zero. So we're already we're already getting forty million. Yeah, but our budget's one hundred and sixty six million. So we should be getting like fifty nine. Yeah, we well, it's more than that. <laughs> Actually, the number is way higher than that. Um, like Harrisburg has two thousand less kids than we do, and gets. I think 10 million more than we do. Yeah. Per year. Yep. From the state. In perpetuity until they redo the jiggered math. Yes. Yes. So um, the problem ultimately is that we're treated unfairly and we need to do something about it. And so I mentioned the fair funding fight and going to Harrisburg and protesting. I think the next extension of that is using this group probably in tandem with the board because this group is independent of the board. We're involved, but it's not us. Um, which is another nice thing that a lot of things are organically happening without the board. But the the uh, other part is there are 143 underfunded school districts, not just urban, but urban, uh, urban, suburban, and rural. We've got to find them, and we've got to make a coalition, and we've got to exert pressure on the representatives of those 143, and then we'll start seeing change. It's just that Scranton is, I think, going to be the leader here. Because we don't have a choice. We have to be the leader because no one's doing anything well, for us. Well, what happens if we don't do that? We, we continue to suffer and things get worse. Because that 1.7... I mean, I mean do you, is, there, is there a utopian view and then there's a dystopian view? Is there, like, is there... I mean, when you say going to get worse... If, if, they don't, if they don't give us... If we don't fight. If we don't fight and if we don't get something, you, you'll see those school closures, you'll, those tax increases, those program cuts. They'll happen. Do I think that we can do things on a local level to mitigate this? Yes. But there's nothing the size of the fair funding fight because we're not going to find $18.9 million in the city of Scranton. Or by selling assets or anything. Nope, none of that is going to get us $18.9 million. It's just not. I asked you the question about what 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 is what do we get total per year because I just wanted to show how I don't the, have dis- the discrepancy the between it, shitty it, school district 2. Yeah, it's it's ridiculous. So there's um, sixteen. What do you? What do you how, how the gap many between gap? The, the gap between us and the next closest is sixteen point four million. Or oh, it, it wait, just it's like if year. we were at zero, they're at sixteen million. Yes, they're getting sixteen million more. The the second one is getting sixteen million more than we are now. Yep, that's how. That's really. So <sighs> when we're not even being hyperbolic here, these are numbers that we got from the state. So we're we're using their numbers to show that they're treating Scranton so badly. And the only way to fix it is 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 legislature. So, okay, let me ask you this question: So, if you did band together 143 underfunded school districts, where does that money come from? So, to 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 fund people correctly, and do you have to do like a reverse audit for the school districts that are getting overfunded? Uh, you know, you bring up uh, uh, something that sticks in Paul Duffy's craw. <laughs> so, a lot of these districts, Abington's one of them, um, have massive fund reserves. 
And I believe the total dollar amount of fund reserves in overfunded school districts, because those exist, is something like $4 billion. So, <laughs> In the state? Yeah. Yeah, because there's 500 school districts. Not all of them are getting screwed. A lot of them are doing nicely. Um, so, so there's $4 billion basically in a surplus. Sitting in individual district accounts not being used. Yes. So um, you could force people to ca- keep a maximum fund balance. They could do that, and that, that could free up some money. Or if you're not using it, give it back to the state. You could do that. Um, Nobody's they, ever going to do no, that. They, they, hell, they could legalize and tax recreational marijuana. I don't give a shit. Fund our schools. <laughs> right. That's what they do in Colorado. Right. Um, they in Texas they they have an extraction tax on natural gas and oil. We don't have one. Novel idea. Yeah. That could fund education. You know, you can go there are so many ways. It's just a matter of political will and political pressure to create that political will. So I'm not worried about finding money. There's money. It's there. It's just whether or not the legislature has the guts to tap it. Um and I I have no problem with sin taxes. So I think it's a no-brainer to legalize recreational mar- marijuana and tax it. That makes a fortune that could pay for all of this funding. But the thing is, if they lose the state Supreme Court case that's coming up, and the court says... Who's the, they? The state. Yeah. Uh, if the state loses that case... Just in, in the federal Supreme Court. Uh, in state Supreme Court, which is the final say on this, because it's about the PA Constitution. If they lose, there's no appeals. And they will immediately have to fund everyone adequately... And, the, and and they're going to have a massive budget hole because it's the gonna state. Be the state. I mean, so what's the fight? Who are they fighting? Well, who's the, is the state so, fighting against someone or is somebody yeah, fighting against the, the state, state? The state got sued um, by a coalition of school districts. Uh, the only local one involved is wilkes barre but there's a coalition of districts that says you're not giving us enough money. Right. You're violating the state constitution. So, like I said, twenty based on your based on your math, based on your really cruddy math that hurts everyone. Um, you need. You know, you need to. Yeah, but even according to your cruddy math, we're getting screwed. Yes. E- yeah. Yes. And the state's like, nah, that's okay. And the argument is, the Constitution says it's not the state Constitution, which is actually more progressive than the actual United States Constitution, by the way. So what's so what's next? Is there hope, or should I go back to my questions? What, whatever I you think want. We got all the questions. Yeah, I mean, we've covered fair funding pretty solidly, and you know. Oh, you got some crap for the charter school shit. Uh. Can you explain that to me? <laughs> sure. Because I, I was listening to you on Frank, Frank Andrews the other day. Yeah, he, and, he was and a it, defender, and that's fine. There's a couple things about charter schools that everyone needs to know. I watch John Oliver, so I know a lot about charter yeah, schools. So, ele- so 11 of the, there are 11 cyber charters operating in uh, Pennsylvania. And please explain to me what a cyber charter is. It's they're, online they're school. Online right? school, there's there's no building. The expenses are next to nothing. They don't have to pay a gas bill. They don't have to bill. pay a gas bill. They don't have to pay... No, property taxes. No, no maintenance people, you know, no pensions. I mean, you could pay no sla- mortgages. No, you could pay slave wages if you want because there's no regulation. You know, whatever. Yeah. So cyber charters, there are 11. Not one of them has ever made what's called annual yearly progress, which is the state, the, the federal measure of success. Not one of them has ever succeeded. They're garbage fires. And the 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 city of Scr- the Scranton School District pays $6 million On the a year. whole, they're garbage fires. Absolutely. Um, and and uh, a lot of people like to defend Howard Gardner and... I tend to take the tack that that the charter model is a problem, but you can even go after them educationally if you wanted. Um, well, there could be good people operating in the gray zone. Yeah, yeah, and I'm, and, yeah. and and they're one of the better charters, but I think they're all inherently awful, and it's and it's because they have no accountability. And here's here's a couple of reasons why. Number one, there are nonprofit like like Howard Gardner, slightly better. There are for profit, which means they get to make money from them. That is a criminal enterprise as far as I'm concerned. Because so, the state's giving them money. No, Scranton is giving them money. Wait, we're giving... We're, six million a year we lose. And here's the to thing. To charters. To charters. So we pay... That way you have no oversight on none, whatsoever. No, we have no zero. Say in anything absolutely zero. Do. This is why it's it should be a crime. But, you know, the legislature's enabled it. So we give $11,000 per regular ed kid to a cyber charter and $24,000 a year per kid for a special needs student of some kind. So whatever whatever your needs are. It might cost $1,000 to educate one kid, but they get to pocket the rest as profit. What do you mean? Like that 30 some thousand dollars? Whatever they don't spend is profit. So if, you they, could have, make if, they, have, if they have one kid that's special ed and one kid that's regular ed, they're they make a fortune. 20 some grand? Yep. Because they're going to pay their teacher, you know, nothing twenty three thousand dollars a year. Yep, with no protections. And the, and not only does the teacher not have protections, the teacher doesn't even have to be certified. 
So I could be a teacher at a charter school? Oh, yeah. Really? They'd hire you now. Not at that rate. Well, you wouldn't want <laughs> I wouldn't to be want hired. The job. Yeah, I, but how is that possible that we can? We they can, create the, because the, there's because there's no over. Look, every I think here's what I think. I think that education should be a right for every child in this country. I don't care who you amen. are. Amen. I don't care who you are. And the border and the people who are talking about the border. Sorry, the refugees. They're not immigrants. They're escaping impoverished countries. And even know? if they are immigrants, like yeah, nobody's, nobody's they're human. Yeah, this, the 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 the. the modicum the the fraction of a fraction of a fraction of a fraction of the percent of a dollar that that affects you is is immeasurable yeah. yeah um so i don't i don't understand why why this life just keeps moving forward in this in this world that doesn't make sense about not having like it's money. Why wouldn't you want the best thing for your kids because money. well when you ask a parent what do you like what do you want for your kids a better life than what i had they always say that but when, well, it, when it when when it actually comes down to actually doing it, they're like, yeah, let's, well, let's, let's, let's. It's not even so. Parents, you, you can't blame them in, in, for. I'm some, not blaming not, parents. Well, I'm, well, I'll I'm, just explain I'm a couple things. The machine. The, here's what, how the machine screws people. It says like, uh, public school is crazy. You know, don't worry. You know, like you can come to a cyber school. Your kids can stay at home with you and learn at home, and they won't have to worry about bullying. And we'll provide you a laptop and blah blah blah. Whatever. Sorry, man, bullying's part of the life experience. I, I agree with you, but but that's an argument that Cruel some parents should be stopped, but. Yes, and and that is how it works. But um, the the problem is, then, then these parents fall for these arguments, and they pull their kids into cyber charters or 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 brick and mortar charters or whatever, and then the district gets drained money. And the thing with Howard Gardner, and this is my bone of contention, they're taking this money from the Scranton School District. It's public money. We have no say over what they do. There is no public oversight of them. And they get six million a year. No, no, not not just every charter just our, as a whole. So you want to talk about tax increase? If we got that six million from these charters, we would have zero tax increase and zero deficit, and money left over. Charters are a problem. So, all, so all we're basically doing right now is going through like the it'll work this way, and 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 it seems like it's so screwed up that to have twelve options to get it back to where it should be that are logical seems. It's insane. Just pick one. Yeah, I mean, there's so. I mean, there's a lot. There's a lot. How, how do you? How do you? How do you still keep fighting? <laughs> I love like, it. Are you? Are you like just beat? Where you're like, oh man, no, I'm not gonna be bad. Like, no. Like, I love this stuff. I love yeah, it. But what happens in January when I'm not there? Yeah, I don't have to work with the people there, and if I want to get loud, I can get even louder. I, I'm. It doesn't bother but me how, that I'm not where, there. But where have you have you found that like your place? Have you found like a good balance right now? Oh where? yeah, I'm. I I know that I'm. What I'm doing is positive. Um, you know, th- there's a couple things that I'm proud of. Number one, anyone who emails me from the community, parent, teacher, whatever, they get an email back. I do my best to help people answer their questions, be as transparent as possible. I published a chapter by chapter primer on I read the it. plan because it's this is made this is not made for public consumption. This is made for indus- like industry insiders. How much time do you think you spent on writing the uh, the book report? I don't know. It was take it t- st- shot in the dark. A couple hours, I don't know. 7 4 I, I, I enjoyed it. So I'm just saying it was between, going, it between reading it and doing stuff. I mean, you put in your own time just, oh, to, just, my to, God. just to try my to poor, disseminate the. Yeah, my poor family. Um, but yes, uh, um, I. What's your I, wife I, think? They come to dinner. You're like, I'm reading the report. That yeah, that actually that happened. Um, so she's a sweetheart, man. Is she's she amazing. Cool with it? She's she knows that what I'm doing is for for your for, kids. for our kids and for our community by the by extension, and she's and she's so supportive. I wouldn't be able to do it without her. Um, and thank God for her. What love you, th- love you, you, Michelle. <clears throat> I love you too, but not in that way. Um, what What do you think is is What do you think's going to happen? Like in your in, like in your use so, all your experience in life and all the shitty things that you've seen and heard of and all the good things that you've seen and heard of and come up with some sort of intuitional in the very short period of time pre pre recovery plan and then after we've already done a bunch of very positive things. So the central administrative reorganization is going to make the district significantly more efficient. Dr. Fine has already identified cost savings initiatives that are going to be implemented almost immediately. So we're already chipping away at that deficit and we've barely gotten started. So that's a great sign. There's a sense of optimism down at central admin that there hasn't been. We're going to hold people accountable for, for their jobs. And, and, you know, and Dr. Fine doesn't care who you are. You're going to do it 
or we're going to have to remediate it. And if you don't fix it, yeah, I don't get my hair gonna, done with your aunt. So I don't care. Yeah. You're going to, yeah. Yeah. It's so funny. Cause I just, in my brain, three people just came to mind who that <laughs> happens with. Like <laughs> it, that's not even a joke. That's how it goes here. Yeah. So that's not on her, Dr. Fine's radar and it doesn't have to be. And she doesn't care. Um, and that gives us power um, to cut through the bullshit. But, the thing is, and I think a lot of people who might have engaged in that or or whatever or, or, or turned a blind eye or not even cared or whatever, now they know that they have to because we can't afford to do the same thing that we've always done. We can't afford it. And and yeah, like I said, the number one thing is that the state is not funding us correctly, but we can only have activism on one side of it. We do have things we can actively control, and that's what the plan does. The plan has what we can do on our own. And we're gonna, and we've already how, started doing how, it. How can how can we as as taxpayers and citizens be sure that um, if if let's say the fair funding thing miraculously, and I'm not saying it won't, I'm not saying it will be a miracle. It might just be a couple of people finally going like, oh, that's not fair. <clears throat> Regardless, you get the money. What's the guarantee that you know? that will continue to happen. So we won't exit recovery even if we get the fair funding. So, so even if you have like a, a, a billion dollar surplus. We're still here. We're legally here for five years. So um, what's going to happen is Dr. Finan is going to use that money, rewrite the plan from a financial standpoint. And what we're probably going to end up seeing then is additions to the plan like librarians come back. Um, the music and art programs that were cut come back. Um, we we need $155 million in capital improvements uh, 55 million of which are emergency uh, improvements. And when you say capital improvements, you like mean buildings, like are, falling buildings are falling apart. So, so we would do that, you know, like it, even with the $20 million ish in, in, in one, if it was recurrent the first year, we could use that as leverage to borrow the money we needed to do all our capital improvements. Like the state is going to fund but us. But is it more. a safer thing to borrow knowing that you're going to have that money next year? Well, I mean, if we got the 20, the Because you're anti borrow guy. Yeah, for capital improvements, no. For budget balancing, absolutely. Like, you can't... It's like taking out a credit card to pay a credit card. That's what they were doing. Right. Whereas capital improvements, like, you're improving an asset. It's like if I took a house and redid the kitchen, the value's higher. Right. Same, same thing. Okay. I just want to understand. Yeah, no, no, I know. That's what I'm here for. And I'll stab you in the heart, too, you son of bitch. So, do you think that the recovery officer has been... Because you were terrified... Um, I, I wouldn't say terrified. You're like the worst thing that can happen is the state comes in. Yes, receivership. Um, that would be horrendous because they. This is like I remember this kind of stupid um, political, almost like a meme among people. I, I think it might have been like George Bush versus John Kerry, but it's like I'm going to take a scalpel to the budget instead of a hatchet. I remember hearing that a lot. That phrase. Yeah. This is the scalpel. It's much more nuanced, and the state would be the hatchet. I hate that comparison, but whatever works here. So, um, is she is she, is she going to stay till? Yeah, she's she's contractually on until June, the end of June. My guess is she'll June keep, of twenty twenty. Yeah, and she renews on a yearly basis, and I'm gonna I'm I'm sure she's going to renew. She is absolutely invested in this, very very invested, because she came in and we since we both came to the board the same meeting for the first time, we kind of like our eyes opened together, and I knew a lot. But there's a lot I didn't know, and um, so she, you can't, you can't share the uh, the sentiment that she had. But as you were getting enlightened to things together, what what was your? It was like, hey, Doctor Fine, did you notice this is a thing? And she's like, I did. That makes no sense. I'm like, I thought so too. Figured I'd point it out. Can we do something about it? And she, she would say, I'm going to put it in the plan. You know that. But it's, I mean, but she's, but she, it, 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 from what you're saying, it seems that she doesn't have, you know, an opinion to the terms of like. This is an egregious blah blah blah. She's just like, here's the problems and here's some. Of She's the a diplomat. I could bet her inner monologue is far more aggressive than her outer monologue. She, I'm sure there's a lot of things that she. If you, if you came in here objectively like her, what, what would your assessment be? And and, and holy I, know shit. I know it's a sci-fi. It would just be idea. holy shit. It would just be what 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 the hell? It, it would. So the inner workings of some of the offices are 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 archaic like paper documentation only like I could see a paper backup, but even then, you know, have, have a, an onsite digital copy and something in the cloud you're covered. You know, that's not what we do. And that that's nonsensical and it's, and it's way behind the times. But um, what, but what's the benefit of doing that? Of the paper stuff? Of getting, of, of, of doing digital. 
So we do payroll for those who I'll, I'll go like quick, I like I like tactile. Okay, so um, I'll give you a good example. We do we do payroll in house. I believe there are three people on payroll, as in we issue our own paper checks. Why? We could have a company do that and do it digitally for ten grand. Instead, we have three people doing that that could certainly be used elsewhere. And who in houses their own check printing? Like <laughs> what? For payroll. Yeah, that's literally what I, it's. It comes on a yellow paper, and half of them look hand typed. Like wait, like in a. It looks like that. It's not, but it is it a dot matrix printer? It. it if it was, I would not be surprised. It, it's bizarre. See, you thought it was a mess before, and then when and you then got, I, I'm like, oh. and then when you got in there, what did you think? It was like, Ugh. it was worse. Yeah, it's like a, you know, like Kiff from Future. I'm like, if this was a home, what? How would you say it was being run? And who's at fault if it was a home? Like, what a family? If you could, if oh, you they'd could, be evicted. Well, I mean, if you could boil down the school district, because I always, I always like the example when you take I don't know. federal budgets and stuff, and then what you do is you take away all the zeros and you go, here's your, I, here's your income. It, here's, okay. a, here's, a, here's how a family of four survives on this amount of money. Now you add all these zeros and it's the federal budget. I actually, it's, it's so ridiculous. I don't think that I could create an analogy given your terms. That's how ridiculous it is. I mean, a family of 30 was living there and the landlord never checked in and... They never paid rent or any utility bills and everything was turned off and yet they lived in filth anyway and somehow had lots of stuff and somehow, I, you know, I don't know. I could go on. I don't know. It just, it probably should have been burned down by that, by now is what I would think. Um, but. I again, mean, is, is it just that the water has been receded so low? <laughs> Because because this is kind of a depressed area, anyways. Is that the maybe, water never really got deep, so that we were maybe, like, maybe I, I really don't. The water's shitty, but at least no, we're not normally drowning. I'm, normally, I'm pretty good with figurative language, but I don't know how to work within the confines of your analogy because it's that crazy. Well, what, what's the best? At, what, I mean, is it like is it like if I wa- if we walked outside right now into the into the house on the Simpsons, like that's how unreal <laughs> it's, it's, it is. It's more like it hasn't had like the cartoon world of the the cartoon house of the Simpsons. Okay, I've I've done some home renovation in my life, and you know how a lot of the local houses had those oil pipes for oil lamps, for home heating oil. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. It's like the district is still using those, even though there's a perfectly good, you know, baseboard hot water system available. Well, there's an argument to be made for technology and progress, but but that doesn't explain everything else. It, like you can't. I, that's yeah, what I'm I, saying. I don't think you can just say like we need to get computers that's why, and computer literacy. And, I, I'm and not. Be well, good. I'm not even talking about technology. I'm talking about just an attitude. Um, Everything is stuck in an archaic mode. And, and I don't mean technologically, but also technologically, but also culturally, systematically. Best practices is a term you hear in a lot of industries. We don't do best practices on a lot. And we're going to now because we don't have a choice. Are you, are you, we're there, legally bound. Is there resistance? There has not been that I've seen. To the, to the you know, the. I mean, you mean internally. Yeah, I mean, I, no. internally to say, like, look, you know, we, we need to have uh, best practices. Like, has there been any... There, there, are probably recent, people, like, there are probably people who are going to be like... Oh, I got to do this now. Yes, but up to this point, I think very few people have been resistant because there's two things going on. One, a lot of people are hopeful and happy to help. And, and, and two, the writing's on the wall. It, it, it's fix this or, or we're done. So... Um, what does done mean? If this if this fails, receivership happens anyway, so we have to succeed. We literally have no choice. And receivership has just come in and and literally that's, the, that's that hatchet. Everything's burn it gone to the ground. Gone. Everything's gone. Buildings. Ah, we're going to save millions by teacher contracts. Them. Gone. Vendor contracts. Gone. Maintenance privatized. Like everything goes if the state comes in. Everything. Yep. And what, what that would you, be what, the only time I would actively consider not sending my kids to a scram. What do you th- What do you think the five alarm fire is going to be? Or is it happening right now to to motivate um, the ta- at least the tax base? Well, they're they're motivated. Um, a lot of or pe- more. Well, like instead of instead the, of like the tax a, a increase is flood. pissing the, the tax increase is pissing people off, and it should. But what people are doing, a couple like one gentleman at the meeting said, you know, it's on me. I've never come to one before, but the taxes are ridiculous, and and I'm going to start coming and paying attention. And all, a lot of those people at that fair funding meeting, I had no idea who they were. Or I did know who they were, and they were on sides that I would not normally think would want to come to something like this. Uh, or they or they roll with groups that would normally be anti-community, whatever. Right. So, so all these dis- disparate groups are coming together. And and I 
I think they're going to keep coming together. And I think that's why people have a sense of, of hope. The A lot of taxpayers are, are angry, rightfully so, but they're channeling that anger into vocalization and movement. And no one listens unless you speak. Same goes for Harrisburg. Speak to Harrisburg, and I think you're going to see it. Is there is there like a gratefulness for you to be in the position you are at this current time right now? No or matter, is there like a dread thing? There's no dread. Um, but I would be grateful. I'm a public servant. No, what I'm saying is like in, in, in 20 years when you look back in your life, you're like, I was there when, yeah. when the ship sure. stopped taking on water. Oh, God, yeah. I mean, I already have a lot to be proud of. I, I, I have no regrets. It's like I said, the day after the election was over, it's like, it's another day. You know? Yeah, keep Whatever. moving. Yeah. I'm, I have a lot that I, on my record that I'm proud of. Like going to all those PTA meetings. A lot of the people said they'd never even met a director before. Are you kidding me? Directors should be going to these things regularly. Well, how is it, how is it that they can entice... Um, I, I heard something floated about make this, the, school, the school director uh, the, like a, a salaried... I, I suggested that, and I wouldn't take one if it were ever passed. But the thing is, you're asking a lot of people to be a school Well, there's director. an argument to be said that they, they knew what they were getting into. Well, yeah, they are. But we would attract more people if it were a paid position. Because you're... Uh, this is Not exactly, I, of, uh, but, it, but would it be the same caliber, or do you think it wouldn't matter? Even if it was a small... So, okay, I, I'll give you a couple of examples. So, a working single mother of three will never be a school director. Right. Never. She's She's got just as much a right as I do to be on a board, but she'll never be on a board because circumstances don't allow it. Right. She maybe, it might be financial, it might be, you know, think of childcare, whatever. That's why these public positions where you are public servants should be incentivized financially. And again, if it ever happened, I wouldn't take one because I'm the one who suggested the idea and I don't want to profit from this. And it, But it's not profit, it's compensation. I mean, how much of my hours of my life are gone because of this. I don't regret it, but my time is worth something. And, um, you know, they don't well, there's even, a lot of, but there's a lot of people in this world that go like, you know, my job sucks, but the pay is good, you know, or at least you got it. You got to make the, pain. I'm looking at something nominal, like what yeah. they do with council. Like, yeah, but th- I mean, that's what I was thinking. I think it makes sense. So it's almost, it's almost like a part-time job, but not yeah, it's, which, it's, it, which it is. So but it should be, cause it's all your time, you it, know, but we, yeah. but, but then let's real quick as an aside, how much time do, do teachers put in outside Oof. the scope of, of what their contract says? Oh, absolutely. We, I mean, because they give a shit. I'm an English teacher. Do you, do you think I'm done grading, you know, 100, three to five page papers I, I at the always, end of the day? I always broke my mom's ass. I'm like, you know, I was always like, I, I'm going to tell you this. You know, I, I was always, I, I think I said this before. I'm like, you know, I, I would break my mom's ass and say, you know, there's, there are those who teach and those that, and then there are those that teach, or those that can't teach, teach gym. <laughs> and yeah. she'd hate it, but I'll tell you, I, that those every one of her students, she had an incredible relationship with. Well, she, 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 she I, I know what she did. She was always bringing in codes for kids that needed it. Like your mom. Oh, she went above and beyond. Premier teacher. She she's did, she's she the epitome softball, of a good teacher. But you know, she saw the writing on the wall too, and she was kind of like, "Better retire. Better get out." Well, I mean, it's like get out, get out before I don't know what's going to happen. Happens. Yep. You know, there's a lot of fear there. I understand that. And especially for new young teachers and especially for... And they're bailing. I mean, we had, what, six teach professional resignations just this past week? Just this week. Yeah, taking jobs in other districts. They don't want... People don't want to stay. You can't blame them. They're looking out for themselves and they have I, to. You can't, you can't. You can't blame them. But, but at some point, you know, there's going to be a light at the end of the tunnel. So, so you're, you're confident in this plan because it was basically the only choice? Or are you confident in this plan because it's, it's, it's common sense? It, it's really good. There's, there's a lot of common sense in here that should have been done years ago. Um, and there's an academic portion. So it's not so, just like so money, money, money. It's how can we make things better for you, kids? You said the recovery officer has the ability to enforce things. Yep. Okay, so what, what someone who's not in, not in compliance, is does she have permission so, to punish? Or, um, what or I is get, there anything? I'm going to guess, and I'm not 100% certain, but I'm going to guess at what's going to happen. Because um, we've, we've already had some kind of discussions about it. She would probably identify this person as unable to do what needs to be done or unwilling. And she would probably recommend that the board fire or replace um, or move that person. Is um, there any protections for that person if she you, recommends that? Uh, if they're union, probably. But everyone would get due process. Nobody's going to be fired willy-nilly. It's like, hey, you're screwing up. You're, you're written up. You got to fix it. Oh, you did it again. And now there's a detrimental effect on the district. You are, you're done. You're done. So, um, 
you know, unions just give you due process rights. It's like people always say like tenure, you know, teachers have tenure, but that's not, doesn't make, make you unfireable. It just means you're not, you're, yeah, you're not, you get not one extra strike. Bulletproof. That, all it means is you get an extra strike. Uh, untenured teachers can be dismissed without cause. Tenured teachers must be dismissed with cause. One strike. So, so what's, so what's next? Um, every, every, I mean, are you going to work your ass off till, 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 till you're done? Oh shit. Yeah. And then you're going to work your ass off and be like, remember, we all, we all stayed in the same house for a little bit. Yeah. I'm not going anywhere. I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> Knowing what I know now from the inside. The other thing is I'm a teacher. So, I mean, I'll make myself available to any of the new board members or any board members at all. If I can be a help, helpful or of service. Um, and if they're doing things that I think is incorrect or unwise, I will tell them privately. And if they continue, then I will tell them publicly. Um, again, I'm not afraid of, of doing what's right. And, and if I make a mistake or, or, or whatever, I'll correct myself and apologize, you know, it, but I've seen you crow and you do it, you do it with a smile. Yeah. Hey, you only get, you don't get better by being right. Right. You get better by being wrong. Yeah, absolutely. Um, when's the next election? For school board, there's the general election in November. That's in November, but, when's um, but the it's next primary. Uh, two years from now. Two years from now, possibly, maybe see you. I have my doubts. It's a lot. I mean, <laughs> really, I'm going to be at a beach. It's yeah, <laughs> at Lake I mean, so if I can be effective off the board and be satisfied with that, then then I don't feel the need. Running for election, especially with kids, is very very hard. Yeah, and it's, it's also exhausting. expensive. Yeah. Well, I mean, I'm like three grand in the hole. Like my own money. Yeah. Because I didn't have any like packers. I didn't have any. I had backers that gave me that helped me financially, but not. There's packs involved in the school board. Races? That, that's how the new group got in. A, a pack. The Scranton pack spent like 30 grand. Why would, a, why would a pack get involved in a. You tell me. Oh. <laughs> for another for another podcast. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll rattle. I want to rattle three things off about that pack. Uh, one of the principals of the PAC has made over a half million dollars from the county representing their, them legally. Another one has um, the insurance contract for the city of Scranton. And another one does a lot of uh, local government business in the advertising realm. So you tell me why that PAC spent $30,000 to elect a group. They're going to call in favors. And it's in the paper that they have called in favors before. You're not it, allowed to do that, though. Yeah, Are you? You're allowed to call in favors from a PAC? I thought the whole PAC was like, you cannot. Uh, no, um, super PACs can't coordinate, but regular PACs can. Oh, so it's super PACs that can't talk to candidates. Yep. But regular PACs could do whatever they want. Hey, Steve, you should you should really consider this. Is that how that works? That they did that. That they literally called in all their people and said, "We want you to appoint this person to a vacancy." That happened. It's in the paper. They admitted to it. So they used their money to get influence and oh. power. I have a huge problem with that. Now, the people that got in, I don't have any problem with as people. Um, but that group is going to have their ear and that makes me nervous. Do you, are you, are you, uh, are you pleased with, uh, the new group of directors coming in? Yes. I mean, I would be more pleased if I were there. Well, no um, kidding. Um, but yes, you know, I've, I've built a great relationship with them. Um, I think have they, have they, have they reached out to you? Oh yeah, yeah. 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 We've talked quite a bit. And uh, what was particularly nice is uh, Catherine Fox who won, gave a, an excellent speech last night at the board meeting and said, you know, we promise you who are leaving the board that we will keep fighting for fair funding. That's awesome. Yeah, it was nice. Does that at least give you a little bit of comfort? I mean, in this, <laughs> it does. In this, Gets this me uncomfortable situation. It's not uncomfortable. Um But it's it, got to be like, it, but you got to It was actually, it was, it was actually moving was probably the right word because like me, PJ and Greg, who are all going to be gone. We're going to be gone. We have poured our blood, sweat, and tears into this issue. We have worked our asses off drawing attention to this issue. PJ especially. We're, Greg and I are only recent to the board. And to hear that just meant that it, it was nice. Good. All right. You good? You got to go see your kids, right? Probably. They matter. Maybe. And then... And then if the shit hits the fan, we'll have you back. I mean, when I mean, <laughs> when you get I, off, I, you're gonna come back and I'm, tell secrets. No, yeah, you well, can't I tell secrets. I, I don't care. I tell no secrets. I probably I've probably violated whatever the hell thing. I'll tell anyone anything. I don't care. I don't, well, I'll put it out there because you said it. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> do what you need to do. I didn't but say I, it. But I mean, you talk about shit hitting the fan. I think the the shit fan's been on permanently. I <laughs> I didn't mean to cough in the microphone, but you know, look. 
that's the thing I like to that I do like about you. Like if I was on the board and you were and you did something like this with somebody else and I did something publicly really illogical, you know, I'd I'd have to respect the fact that you you criticized it. I'd have to. You know. I appreciate that. No, I'm just I, and everyone else should should think about it that way. I mean, everybody thinks that politics is a blood sport, but it seems to me that like when 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 people actually get to work together, it's like what you see down in 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 DC where, you know, like Cummings and Sanford, you know, they're like we're great friends, you know. Yeah. We might not agree philosophically, ideologically, politically, but we, you know, we're 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 great friends and you can you should be able to criticize your friends um cuz I think it, it I think it's the the whole interest is to make them be better. Yeah, and and you know, that's how I feel and um I, I I welcome any criticism from anybody and I get it a lot particularly from the public because if they don't like like this tax increase is one. But How much shit you getting for that? Quite a bit. Um and but I tell them right off the bat like it, it's not going to be 6.7 and I'm going to work to make it lower. And here and I'll give you one quick thing that I said to everyone who's been hitting me on this. I want to propose an exemption for uh, uh, on, on the tax increase for owner occupied homes. You own your home and you live in it. You won't pay as much as landlords or out of town landlords. That way, the money that these people who's that guy Ken Bond? Yeah, kill uh. kill him. Don't don't kill the people on fixed incomes. Get him. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know we're the bearing the brunt of of that. Well, he's not going to pay it anyways. <laughs> he's not, but he's going to lose his homes. You know what I mean? <coughs> Who uh, takes them? The city can, and the school district actually can get more aggressive with liens. Um, and if we work with the tax claim bureau. They they'll sell your property if you don't pay. So if we work with them, that there are judicial sales, share of sales, and they have different conditions attached to them and tax sales. Um, but yeah, you're gonna lose your your property if you don't pay, and that's an an option that we have and we can get more aggressive with. But like I said, you know, I want to do what I can to help homeowners in the city because Jesus, we're getting killed. I, you know, I own my home and I, you know I'm moving this weekend to a new one, so I'm paying property taxes. And this increase is going to hit me. But I think people who, who make their lives in the city should have an exemption. Old Forge uh, gives a rebate to people 65 and older. We could arrange something like that. So if we're going to raise it, and, and I know that that's going to decrease the amount of revenue that we have, but that's fine. You know, raise it X amount and make sure we set aside enough to give it back. But it seems like you're being fair. My bad. Why, like, but why is that? why is that such a problem now? Like, why is it such a problem? Like, it seems like it was a problem then. It seems like it's always been a problem where it's like, you know, I go over your house, I bring you an apple. You come over my house, you bring me an apple. Everybody's happy. We're playing fair. I don't, I'm not, you know, I'm not bringing a case of beer over to your house expecting you to come back to my house with a case of beer. I brought that. I'm just trying to be fair. That didn't make any sense. I'm sorry I said that Well, no, that no, way. the beer was equal to the beer and the apple would be equal to the apple. Yeah, I really apple, screwed so, that up. Cause, but, but like if, cause, you said, if you said I gave you a case of beer and you just show up with a stupid apple. Yes. That would work. That's unfair. Yes. So why I just I just don't understand like is it like when you when when you say before that like you know it's just the way people are used to is that is that a is that a a, a societal thing and I when I say societal I mean Scranton like Scranton society. Scranton yeah. society. It is. It definitely is. Um, but where the, they're just so used to like just like like it almost seems like like if if you could if aliens came down and could see people's thoughts and emotions I I really think that if they came to Scranton all they would just see is like ugh. Just Makes sense. It's like it's like a big whatever. Yeah, that's about right. But this this plan is like a brute force change. And it seems and it seems and it seems like the fair funding is people not going eh anymore. Yeah, well, the, it's going to hit. How, the, how do people get in touch? How do people look that up? How do they get involved? I saw there's a petition it's all over going fa- It's all over Facebook. Um, is there cer- is there certain pages or profiles or something that people can look up? Um, mine, Mike Williams. Uh, is it on your website? You want to plug your website I actually, too? Well, you know what? It will be on my website. I, I've been moving, so I haven't had time to update it, but TomBorthwick.com. I'll put up some fair funding stuff there. Um, Dan Simmerl is, is is doing the media, social media side of it or whatever, um, and his website, which I think is DanSimmerl.com, I think has a, has a link to the petition on it. Um, but yeah. Y- or you, can you just go on Google and, and type just in Just Google Scranton Fair Fund. Yeah, I mean, we've been written up in the paper. Like, uh, you know, they're, they're, the media, uh, the television media was at the Fair Funding meeting. So it's pretty easy to find us. Are you growing every day? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yep. And the they're, um, the next major meeting is this Monday at the Trip Park Community Center at 630. And it's uh, committee meetings. This um, Monday, which would make it... My, mo- my final move-in date. So August 19th. Yeah. So I w- August 19th at 630 at yeah. Trip Park? Yeah. 
Tom Borthwick, always a pleasure, man. Mark Denenbaum, thanks for having me. Keep fighting the fight, buddy. Don't you worry. All right, bye. Be good. (laughs) 